Hey, welcome. Day two in Justice Pro Series. Live early in the morning, getting ready to kick off the second set of pools. I'm Katana Prime. And I'm Darth Arma. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the Injustice Pro Series presented by PlayStation 4. All right, now coming up first, we have the man, the myth, the legend, John Nitty, hot dog suit, in tow. The mustard is a bit sloppy right now. A little sloppy. But hopefully his gameplay is a lot cleaner. He's going to be going up against Jody the Great, hailing from St. Louis. You know, the Midwest trying to defend the house one way or the other. Gonna have Robin Begin. and Firestorm. Sick gear to start the day. All right, and Firestorm getting it going. Robin not checking his, not checking his feet and, and eating a full combo. All right, the patience. Jody trying to work his way in slowly but surely. Denied on the burner ring. And using the extended range of Robin's sword, uh, arguably the best mid-range game of of all of the characters. Gets opened up by the Molten Trap. Gonna get a full combo into the restand. All right, and a great jump in, but does not actually confirm into a full combo, but he does get something else going, but unfortunately drops it. Yeah, it tries to get a little tricky there. Meter burning the Molten Trap to catch Jody, being impatient, but instead gets the punish. A lot of sword swipes, jumps in. Great range from John Eady, staying right out of that sword. Gets a and that's such a cool animation. Oh, Robin yeah. stabbing you with the sword, jumping on it for a little bit of flair to show you what's really good. And a nice backflip kick. Firestorm closes out the round. John Needy, still Needy. patient. You know, one spot at a time, one fireball at a time. And there it is. Molten Trap. Jody showing excellent patience. And there's the confirm. Should be enough to kill. And Robin with that assassin strike, a quick slash to the midsection. And Jody tying it right back up. Both these players pretty much even. Molten Trap into the back three, full combo. John Nitty is not dropping any of this, finishes his plate, and he's got him again at full screen, trying to zone in a great jump in. Oh, but doesn't commit. Misses the combo now, he's on the receiving end, pops the level three, Firestorm's gonna regain some health here. Chance to do extra damage, and any splat strings turn into launchers. But we'll deny the chance to see what happens as Jody goes for the clash immediately. Now starts to come over his own. Leave something to be desired there. Not sure what the game plan is. Maybe nerves. He's eating a few fireballs to the face. Yeah, a few straight fireballs. He's got a big uphill to climb. All right, this time another punish on the Molten Trap. Completes it this time, the restand and the spacing right on the outside. Wakes up, getting a little crazy now as we go down to the wire when it comes to health. And the double forward three overhead flips, a little fiery toes right there, just dancing on them one time and firestorm. And I think John Nitty going for that easier combo at the end really shows the, his his uh, his dedication of paying attention to everything, knowing that why am I going to risk potentially dropping this combo with a back three when I can do just two forward threes? Very easy to do, very hard to mess up. Absolutely, it's always a quick decision to get the ten out of ten combo. You know? Exactly, the one that might not be as flashy as people want, but then again, it's not about that. It's about getting a W. And with all this money on the line, it's all about that oh, W. Man. All right, the Molen Trap now. Jody Card trying to move in between the hits, but luckily, John Diddy dropped the combo. Challenges his counter poke with the DP. Great tech by John Diddy. All over it. Molen Trap, John Diddy full combo. Keeping him pretty much full screen at the end of it, and John Nitty just resorting to zoning. He needs to watch out for that jump in. Great patience by John Nitty. He's not just mindlessly zoning there. He is thinking about it, and he's he, he's wondering when is he going to try to jump in at me. Yeah, also, when John Nitty gets a hit, he's ending every combo in the Molten Trap for the restand to deny Jody a chance to wake up or for any kind of Oki, just resetting the neutral to get his fireball game going. And there we go again, another mix-up. That back one, that quick little thigh check oh, from yeah. Firestorm. The next hit in that string naturally is an overhead, but John Eddy doing a great job of mixing it up with that low molten trap. And Jody is already off of his clash. And John Eddy's at full trait right now. Once he blues up, uh, it's going to be really, really, that overhead is going to do so much damage. All right, and this time Jody with the punish. He has a lot of ground to cover, and dropping combos won't help him get there. Get the full damage this time, a little under 300. Now, John Nitty really has no reason to go in. He has no reason to just to, to, to put himself at risk. 
Oh, and there we go. He talked about the easy oh, combo. No. Last time he goes for the 4 3 4 3. Instead, drops this one. But with such a life lead, it should be fine. But we've seen real master comebacks before. Won't that, be this one. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not this one. And I see Jody get a little too antsy there, not really waiting for the meter burn. But I guess that's the mindset. Is it? Is he going to meter burn it, and do I punish him now, or do I, or you know, do I wait for it? Either way it goes. The hot, the they're they're both unsafe. Yeah, the hot dog is cooking. The mustard is almost complete on the hot dog and ready to be eaten as John Eddie prepares to advance to the next round. Up two games to zero right now. Jody, huge mountain to climb in his face. He's going to get eaten alive once again by the Bolton Trap Firestorm. All right, John Itty just feeling him out, spacing it out, and he just decides to go in. He's 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 had enough of this zoning. He just wants to go in now. Yeah, and that impatience is getting him torched as John Itty continues. Fireballs, fireballs, Bolton Trap. Jody trying to find a way, simply getting out zone here in the Torpedo, one of the quickest special moves in the game. It's very frustrating. It's very frustrating once you make all that progress to finally get in, and then you just get chest checked with all a right. torpedo. Well, Jody's in now. What's he going to do with it? The sweep and a wake up immediately from John Nitty. Again, no patience. Lots the first part of the Molten Trap in a fantastic air escape. Very spins, well timed. Spins two bars to, to have another chance on the inside, but is thrown out immediately. John Nitty spacing. Oh, he drops the end of that combo. I, I, I've been seeing that this whole match between Jody, and I think he really needs to work on that. John Nitty going for the forward 3-3, twice to avoid the clash. Right, he's facing out, there's the sword, the deep beat. Jody trying. He's gonna go for the knockdown instead, and John Nitty wakes up again, because why not? Another torpedo. Robin a little too slow on the startup from that overhead sword that he attempted, and John Nitty's gonna poke his way to victory, as we see Perfect Legend coming up to the stage. What do you think about John Nitty's randomized hot dog gear? Um, yeah. He forgot his hat. The hat's missing. The so hat is missing. Tournament mode is on in real life. <laughs> at least at least for John Nitty. Yeah, it's, it's on. And, uh, you know, NRS has clearly converted all of us to where we've taken it a bit too far. Just a little bit. Just John Nitty forgetting the hot dog. He's going to go raw, you know, no helmet. Not the traditional look, but good enough to get the victory and advance to the second round or third. Not quite sure where that was, but I know it was early in winners. This is, yeah, yeah. This is, this. is That was the first. That was that should have been the first round. They were waiting on deck okay. and for us to get started. All right. But we're in here, and we got a great treat for you guys. Perfect legend, everybody's favorite Midwest hero. Yeah. All right. He's going to be going up against Chaotic, the Matrix representing Hug Life as his shirt so brilliantly shows. Hug Life. Yes. All right, so. And who's Perfect Legend? I feel like he's been mainly using Batman, not really venturing too far off from that. Um, I mean, does he have a pocket Aquaman and a pocket Black Adam like everyone else here today? Uh, <laughs> maybe. Maybe? I think so. There's a lot to be desired. Uh, we have no idea what's gonna happen. Remember, even though this is day two, this is still, the, this is still pool play, so it's early. Um, secret upsets can happen. Brand new killers can show up and legends can be born. All right, so character select screen, beautiful. Getting those buttons intact and that Batman here. I'm not sure how I felt about the cowl. I don't know. You don't know? A corner. I think it looks really cool. It kind of looks like something straight out of a comic book. Oh, for sure. No question that this game is a love letter to <laughs> all of us. Every top day. to bottom. As Hal Jordan, that's the little blue, blue shader. I thought that was a fantastic touch, you know, giving him all of the oh, yeah, yeah. the last two shaders uh, for the most part. But we're going to settle things at Arkham. Oh, no wait, wait, wait a, a minute. Bump. Yeah, the denial. My palms. My, my man, palms my man put out his hand for a right, handshake, and PL looked him dead in his eye and gave him the fist bump, and he said, listen, you take this, and this is all you get. That is intimidation factor. That is all high-level mind games in my mind. I think PL just didn't want to show him how sweaty his palms actually were. That's all it is. PL's keeping it on the surf. Uh, he's, he's avoiding it. He doesn't want to expose his weaknesses. The strategy is too real right now. Hey, man, it's all about the mindset. You got you to gotta, you gotta have a nice read on all these incredible players, and PL is an incredible player. Okay. So he's always gonna have fighting game mentality. All right, so we just 
Wow, and PL starting with that jumping medium attack from Batman, one of the strongest in the game. Are we going to see a grapple hook? No, he, he decides to hold on to the trait, and it did not help him at all because Hal Jordan just woke up with that back one. Yeah, why not? Uh, Matrix is not, you know, hit confirming and canceling into the trait activation. Lancers might maybe just wants to play a spacing game, He's saving his combos for later, or building his meter up for super one way or the other. Whatever his thought process is, he better execute it soon, as BL took that life bar in a little under 20, 30 seconds. Very, very fast, and the parry just wasn't active long enough at the very end of it. Great call by BL, but it just wasn't, wasn't long enough. All right, and the overcharged Lantern. Smart stuff there. Giving P oh, and a great 4 3 is going to hop over the wake up slide, leaving a small gap after that overcharged lantern activation. But I mean, such a big radius on that explosion. You're just a guy in a you want a meter burn back through your way in between that, or try to backdash out of the range. Either way, Nature is trying to keep the space in front of him occupied and controlled. Nice block on the grapple hook and the bats. A little too much block stun as he tries to anti air his way. And a great flip out. He, that was really his only option. Clash was already used, and this looks like it's all PL, man. This is all PL. Oh, and the mix-up could have continued the combo and simply killed, but instead, Alexa saved the resources, goes for a crossover mix-up again, and we see Matrix with the eyes wide open and a head shake. A bit overwhelmed, but three out of five, and two more chances to get the job done. I think Matrix's biggest mistake that he's making right now is he's respecting bats too much. He feels like it has more hits blocks them than it actually does. Yeah. You can anti-air through a lot of bat setups. Absolutely. You're free to move as soon as the bat hits you. On block, it doesn't have much done at all, but maybe still has the mindset from the distance one where Could've people been, yeah. were kind of conditioned for it. Could definitely be it. Great anti-air batarang by PL, and he goes back to the zoning mentality. No reason to go in, no reason to put yourself at risk. If he can't get through this obstacle of, of, of zoning, what does it matter? And I mean, do I say it? I mean, that first round was a perfect. It was. From PL, but instead, Matrix, here we go, trying to run it back. Oh, great cross up, but Perfect Legend's gonna wake up with the down two. Great trade in his favor, saves himself from a loop of combos and potentially Vortex material. Air escape spins two bars, and again, a lot of new players already getting You're accustomed to the new suit. mechanics. Spinning the two bars on the air escape to us, um, avoid, you know, certain situations that would lead into restands, high exactly. damage combos, or leave your your opponents wide open for counterattack. Perfect legs was seemingly using them at the best time. Jumped over the wall. Gotham is clearly not paying for it. <laughs> But instead, tosses some of the Brainiac ship and walked right into the unblockable explosion. Is Matrix, meter burn roll. PL's just getting a little too fancy at this point. He really has no reason to be afraid of this person. Yeah, and this pressure is overwhelming. Any stray hit is going to do it on block or hit. Looking for the bar and the up batarang, which I'm sure was to be meter burn for an explosion. Perfect legend up two games to zero. Matrix has to dig deep. Summon the power of the pugs everywhere and gain that power to run it back. Perfect Legends Batman is looking really, really impressive right now. Yes. Uh, and I had a great time watching it um, last Tuesday for Top 8. Or even better, that the Saturday, the mirror match between him and Forever King. Absolutely fantastic. Craziest, set. craziest ending. All right, back one three. All right, the wall is up. This time, Matrix blocks pressure. Avoid still blocking, hasn't gotten opened up just yet, but right on cue, that low. It's gonna gain Batman the first hit bonus, commits to the entirety of the string, and the low seems to be giving Perfect Legend a lot of mileage, as he's now a perfect three for three on low attacks, make it four for four. Four for four. Perfect Legend, very, I, I love his idea to just keep the bat out there. And oh, they, and the raw berry out yes, of nowhere. Something about these Batman players, after that hit but into the double kick, leaving themselves in slight negative frames to throw that parry out there. I don't know if it's just a Batman thing or they want to It's prove, a parry thing. They want to show that they have the reads of a god. It just hasn't <laughs> been successful. But outside of that, a near flawless game. And this time the low is finally blocked. Goes for the entirety of the string, but right on cue gets opened up. And this is a mauling right now. Matrix simply right. cannot Push find the answers. He's forced to use the clash early in the life bar. He's going to regain 25%, but be at such a deficit with no meter and no chance to break. 
He, he seems like he's getting really frustrated by all this zoning. He, even when he gets in, PL's defense is so on point. He's so used to this already. It, it, this is a returning, these are two returning legacy characters. Oh, here we go. Matrix finding his groove. About to take out PL's first bar. As long as he can keep his cool, block all these things, but he's, he keeps getting opened up by this low. Oh, and I'm not sure about that first life bar. Perfect Legend working on defeating him without even having a chance to see his second life bar. Meter burns the battering of forward three and a cartwheel, a uh, handshake. Perfect Legend making it look easy. That was pretty dominant. Uh, Perfect Legend, like I said, great Batman player. He's, he's, I'm really impressed with all his setups, everything he's doing. And I feel like he just, he was respecting, Matrix was just respecting the, the block stun on the bats a little too long. All right. You also have to keep in mind that Batman's quickest tool to open you up is that low, and you always have to be mindful of it. Here we go, more crossover players coming from all over the FGC. This is Hollywood Sleep on your right, Ev Evolution Champion in KI. Yeah, Sleep. You know, one of the best players, free, uh, no questions. I Rambo. love watching Sleep's Arbiter in KI. Arbiter it's so, Sleep. so hype. And you have Rambo crossing over from, from DOA, just a collection. Beautiful thing to see what the Injustice Pro Series has done, keeping everybody coming through coming through to try to get a chunk of, uh, of this beautiful change and spend some time with their favorite DC heroes. Sleep can't avoid a smile for the camera. Rambro's just going to ignore it. Yeah, he's just going <laughs> to come in and, you know, representing his Ariana Grande, you know, with the hoodie. That, that's his specialty. And uh, remnants of, of, of the infamous Yomi House just trying to carry on the legacy in any, you know, possible way. No. And, and I, I, I love <laughs> and we get to zoom in on the Ariana Grande, <laughs> beautiful work. And uh, I love this. Uh, the, every all these crossover players just looking at us and just basically it's like a target is on this community, but in a good way. In Absolutely. A good way. I mean, with just two, it's a brand new game, super accessible. Anybody can come in. That's what we want. You know, you pick it up, you learn your character, and oh man, he's not doing this. Cyborg. Fighters and the Cyborg. most improbable matchup. Improbable. We are seeing Wonder Woman against Cyborg. I, I definitely cannot see, I, I cannot say I've seen this match before, Listen, not yet. Diana's beautiful and these guys are getting right into it. That didn't look like a button change. That was an aggressive action towards the opponent. No, we are going in. All right, there's the grapple set up. Down two of the gods. That lasso covering so much vertical range. No one's jumping in on Wonder Woman, not at all. All right, staying zone out, the Nova Blast. Cyborg, piece by piece, trying to add him up. Meter person to get the multi-directional. The traits out, the Roomba is crawling on the ground. Base the jump in, gets the anti-air. Very great presence of mind by Sleep, knowing that she wanted nothing to do with that Roomba. Not at all. Very right. traps in play. No. Trying to keep the distance. Oh, but these are power characters, so they're going to slam that gas tank on the right. But instead, it's going to keep Wonder Woman out using the bracelets of submission. Oh, and Meter Burn rolls right into the room of party time in the corner now. Cyborg in control. He's going to jump into the corner and he'll wake up Meter Burn back three. Smart stuff to power his way through that overhead whip from Wonder Woman. Such good distance on that move. It's definitely a great presence of mind to keep when you're at that distance against Wonder Woman. She doesn't have too many fast hitting strings, so she's going to go for those. And a Meter Burn back three is definitely going to work in a lot of situations. We're talking about strings and trying to escape pressure. Cyborg with the armor on the grapple hook to escape certain situations gets the double kicks and even though he isn't doing big damage all of these straight hits two hit combos and the nova blast adding up wonder woman almost at half health gets the rockets out to keep the space in between them and we're seeing great control from sleep follows the roomba it is still coming ladies and gentlemen Roomba's coming. trust me there it is gets the pop-up beautiful conversion from sleep and rambro forced a break what a setup that was absolutely incredible Sleep really doing his homework, really hitting the lab hard, and it can tell in his gameplay. And I'm not surprised at all because just knowing that he's just a, a crossover player, a very successful crossover player, I expect nothing less. All right, Meter Burn rolls in. There's the Rockets for protection. Jumps in, blocks the entire attempt, and uses the grapple hook to escape again. The Sleep lame stuff. Love it. Great mobility. This time goes for the up bomb. Cyborg summoning the power of those mother boxes. And this is beautiful, just keep away. Wonder Woman trying desperately to get in. Finally in, but every time he gets close, Sleep just wants to escape with that grappling hook. Great Nova Blast, the bombs are out, the Roomba is set up, and just filling the screen with all type of hazards and Sleep. 
using Cyborg, great utility, great zoning, mixing it up well from full screen and close. Can we and talk? We, can we, we talk about how much better Cyborg is in this version? And it's just because of the trait change, just because of the character ability. It's opened up so many doors for him to have so many different aspects of projectiles just coming at you. Ruba on the ground, um, Ruba in the air. <laughs> it's not a Ruba in the air. So but. we have a character switch. Rambo's gonna go over to Black Canary. Maybe that level three screen from full, <clears throat> from full distance, able to. Captured Cyborg through all his zoning and anti-airs. It causes a crumple and it, allow, it allows Black Canary to get in for free essentially on connection. And it also extends combo. Big damage there. It spends the bar for the extension. 400 damage. Yeah, I think Black Canary going, going for Black Canary. I think that's this is a great switch. Uh, she can, when Scream is fully charged, ready to go, even on a trade, you're really going to hurt her zoner for just flinching, for moving. Wow, in the back three straight to the head. Canary looking for that low slide, trying to clip the feet of Cyborg. But instead, eats a huge metal fist to the face. And here we go once again, more Nova Blast. Zoning out. Trying to spin the meter, doing everything to keep Canary at the distance he wants. And sleep now, a pressure cancels. Catches the low. It's going to get the uppercut. Doesn't spin the bar to extend, but instead gets the meaty neutral jump set up. Rambro fighting back. And Rambo going in there to sleep with a great rollout. Uses two bars, but I think it was definitely worth it considering how much of a life lead he has. Uh, using that room of depression, we have the step kicks now. Cyborg walking his way. Oh, he goes for the down two, but it gets stuffed because he crosses up, hits him on the other side, hits him in the back of the head. More Roombas gets the rockets out and the denial anti-air. Canary this entire time not able to clash. It's gonna get denied and wake up after the Canary gets punished for no connecting idea. with the Canary cry. He and didn't know what to do. It's just so overwhelming that Roomba, such a great security tool. And it also does not go away on hit or block. Once Cyborg summons it, it is going to do its job. And there we go again. Interrupting pressure from Rambo. Rambo, excuse me. Cyborg with the walk down. So methodical in his approach to sleep. Great neutral jump to bait out the grab. It was a full combo punish and keeping him in the corner. A meter burn back three, perfectly timed. And Sleep going in, and he gets full Banshee Scream out. Yeah, whip punish with the Scream. She's had enough. Rambro is an angry man, and he's living vicariously through his character, expressing himself, going for that overhead three times in a row. Sleep with the grapple to escape back at full screen, exactly where Cyborg wants to be. He excels with these fantastic projectiles. A projectile that, hit, that hits mid is a very, very great asset in this game. Yeah, it does a huge chunk of damage. Like that Canary Cry, gets the flip up. Oh, and the down two, not quick enough, gets fully stuffed again. I feel like Black Canary is very good at stuffing wake-ups and very fast anti-airs. Yeah, goes for the throw there, not quite sure. Hasn't learned his lesson that the Roomba is, in fact, going to continue to do his job once summoned. It is on autopilot. I mean, we're talking about cyborg technology. Do you, do you oh, think he would program a Roomba to go away on block? Absolutely not. He's summon, summoning it from, like, nothing. This guy's, like, a technological genius. He is technology himself. Fill yet? Not by a long shot. And, and he clearly hasn't had his fill yet. <laughs> that was a good clash. Great reactions. That was the last hit, and I, I feel like Sleep felt like most players won't react by the second or third hit of that, that three-hit string. All right, Roomba's out, and now Black Canary looking for the respect. She needs Bait. to get out of there. Great, great jump out. And this could be the makings of a comeback. Canary cry. Oh, Cyborg a bit too high and just out of the range. Rambro in trouble now. Looking for an answer, and the great splash damage on the Rockets. Able to carry both sides and sleep. I have not seen a Cyborg this good. Could this be a sign? Could this be a sign? I mean, you know, even though Cyborg is a legacy, even though Cyborg is a legacy character, he's a totally different character. All right, speaking game. of legacy characters, here's Batman, the man who started it all, opening the insurgency. Forever King just pressuring, pressuring, pressuring. Uh, excuse me, perfect legend that is. See, I got Batman players all in my head. Yes, this is perfect legend. Doing yes, a it is. Great job. With the, look at that predict that the prediction on the jump, and just him fully executing these combos. Using all his meter, not leaving anything up to chance. He is here to win this. Yeah, and we saw that time and time again. The up, 
ring. That's just, that is the ultimate, like, mind game. He just knows. When you throw something preemptively and someone jumps into it, you got to feel yourself oh, at yeah. least once or twice. At least once or twice. All right, guys, don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break, but we have more Injustice Pro Series action presented by PlayStation 4 coming for you. All right, we are back, and we have a surprise for you. Deadshot is here. If the character select screen is anything to be believed, some of the sickest gear, which makes it passable. We have CD Manny going up against Nightmare, and he trolls us oh, and immediately goes no. to Black Adam. So Nightmare is going to switch to Batman. Now, during the break, I'll give you a little inside scoop because we are here. These guys were counterpicking each other on the character select screen for the entire time, sitting on those characters right until the camera came back. What a mind game. The mind games are everywhere. Unbelievable. She's to deny that power. She's All right. smart to know its limits. Now, these are both yeah. returning characters, both legacy characters, but Black Adam starts out with his brand new string, the forward advancing high that leads into an overhead and a lot of mind games. All right, well, it was enough to get the first hit and gain that ever important first bar meter. Now sitting on two bars, trying to keep Batman zoned out with the low lightning here. Making him work for it, rushes in and a reversal throw from Nightmare. Single Batarang. Oh, and the EX dive kick, no conversion from Manny there. 
Now this is a very dangerous playfield for Batman because these, inter these interactables are unblockable and they do travel full screen. So he's got to watch out, he's got to time his jump. Man, he's got the interactables, but he's ignoring it. Is he not an Justice player, or does he just hate interactables? It's okay. I think he wants to play the spacing game. You see a lot of low lightning from Manny right now, trying to get Nightmare to jump. and doesn't have a problem with winning the game from full screen. I mean, a W is a W. Great block by CD Jr., recognizing the overhead was coming. Oh, and the whip punish there. It's a big boy damage. The forward three to keep him in the corner. 484. Gets the cross up on the dive kick. Batman's going to throw the fire out of the conduct stage. Just, I've never seen it go that way. I've never seen it go that way. It just flipped over. Yeah, and that's the thing. He's able to regain 30% of his health. But I mean, at this point, any touch is going to equal death. Gets the pop up, explodes the gargoyle. Could this be the makings of a comeback or not? We'll see. Low lightning, piece by piece, chipping away at Bruce's health. Now Batman needs to get in, he cannot let, I mean this is such a tough uphill to climb because that trade is up, that means if those orbs touch Batman, he, even if he blocks them, they're going to do 1% each. And look at the level of poise from CD Manny, he's fine. just sitting in one spot, waiting his turn, picking his spot, and activates the low lightning after avoiding that trait bat, and that is the face of a determined man. I mean, CD Jr., no slouch at fighting at fighting games at all by any means. This is KI's first EVO champion. And, you know, I, I expect nothing less. All right. Cancel the trait into the throw, 174 damage. With that enhanced, you know, trait adding just a little bit. Every part of damage counts, and those lightning orbs do great work for Adam in every situation. Help him with the plus frames at the strings. And again, full screen presence, low lightning all day. Nightmare seemingly does not have an answer. I think Nightmare needs to pick his battles. He needs to he needs to try to advance and try to try to predict lightning as his trade is out. He needs to get that trade out, jump over a lightning, and send the trade out after him for a full combo. Great grab, recognizing that CD Jr. was not going to press a button after. And the low lightning again, quick work. Nightmare seemingly afraid, not very Batman esque. But it is three out of five, so he finally gets in up close, gets the cross up. Oh, and that launcher is punishable. CD Jr. could advance with his eye with Black Adam's new strength for a full combo punish. But instead gets in here, 350 damage. Spins the bar twice. I'm not sure what's going on. I don't agree with those. That's a lot of bar to waste. Yeah, and the meter burn roll right into the punishment on the cross up, trying to press buttons in between hit advantage frames and Nightmare seemingly lost. EX dive kick, EX lightning. It's it's just a truly dominating performance from CD Manny at this point. Yeah, he's keeping his composure, he's keeping his pool, and just keeping him at bay. Black Adam has great tools to to, to stop Batman's jumping. He's got a great down two. And, and look at Manny, that's focus. He looks Black so Adam. heartless. And Nightmare, he looks like he's, he's lost. Oh, a little stretch. Are you little, throwing a dead shot? A deep breath. In choosing death shot, he has the head nod of confidence. He says, you know what? I believe that I can run him back. He can definitely do this. Death shot has his full screen options that Batman doesn't. All right, well, he gets opened up by the jump attack to start things off. Jump kick in the dive kick. going to drop the combo, but still have excellent corner positioning. Jump in into the low staggers. Whips a neutral jump kick, but still in business now. Nightmare already putting together more combos than he did in the first two games with Batman so far. I feel like Nightmare does, does need to establish more of a full screen presence though. It is Black Adam, but I, I feel like Deadshot still forces Black Adam to just go for a meter burn dive kick in. And All he right. needs to predict it. All right, no punish. Gets the low light roll. Meter burns it. Clips the kneecaps of Black Adam. Flicking the wrist. Showing off his infinite supply of bullets. Deadshot. Trying to work his way in. Okay, now he has Black Adam back to the corner looking for the 50 50 mix up, but instead throws it out way too far. Easy whip punish for CD Manny, and 500 damage is enough to clear the first life bar and reset the game to full screen. Right, and those blue bullets, once they do connect, they do send you flying, do send you full screen, and they're very frustrating to deal with. Yeah, such a heavy impact on those bullets. Deadshot wants his opponent right away, going through all of his strings, showing a lot of kicks in the mix up there, gets the overhead flash, jumps in, and he's playing a pressure game. Unorthodox Deadshot right now, 
but it's working. Meter burn roll out, jumps off the bench, and Manny just playing patient. Doesn't want to risk anything, but instead eats the meter burn low rifle to go back to full screen. CD Jr. went a very long time without pressing a single button on his stick. Yeah. Just patience. All just over the place right now. No punish on that low rifle at point blank range. Goes for the assassin strike, no punish. Not sure what's happening right now. CD Jr. is just picking his battles. He's no reason to. I feel like he tried to jump right there at the end, or maybe he just overextended when he stood up for the back three or for the forward three. All right, and Nightmare able to tie it up. It's a weird change of events. Not the most traditional way of dead shot we've seen so far this early in the game, but somehow still in this very much low rifle from full screen. Air to air shot. He had the right idea, but the dive kick a little too fast. And Meterburn making that wake up knee safe. Very great tool by Deadshot. All right, Deadshot just shooting the kneecaps. Staggering that back one at negative one. Such a fantastic tool. Everyone looking for the overhead after just allowing Deadshot to mix it up again, essentially for free in most situations. Now, what CD Jr. And, oh, I'm sorry, what CD Manny needs to realize is that he has a huge meter deficit. So once he does get in and start doing combos on Deadshot, he's got to watch out for that clash. Unbelievably slow. The timer is down to 22 seconds. Are we actually going to see a timeout? There's no way. Manny There's running no way we're the clock down. Unbelievable. Timing out Deadshot. 13, 12, and the countdown is very much real. The trade is activated. Has enough damage to get the job done, and we will not see a timeout. But instead, Manny making the most usage of the clock. Didn't want to risk whatever it was up close. And Nightmare not quite able to get the zoning um, as effective as he wants as both men just walk off the stage. And, yeah, that was kind of... It was a little passive. Um, I think what Manny did there was just try to establish that he can block. He can just keep his cool. You know, he, he's thinking long term. He's th he wants to. He doesn't want to go to his next match all jittery. He wants to go to his next match like, okay, I had that. It's complete dominance. Yeah. No Eli problem at all. <laughs> Coming up, we have Eli the Curry, also a commentator, just shaking his head in disarray. He's just like, Good, just let me die in peace. There you go. There he, you he, go. he wants the people to know that we should let him die in peace. Not quite the confidence booster that you were looking for. But oh, I got all kinds of things. <laughs> I'm gonna say BG <laughs> this oh, is beautiful. It. I that might it. be the greatest OS, though. You come up with a lack of confidence. Oh, I'm free. It's okay. Or I'm just playing for fun. You know, one of those guys. And then you show all of this tech and these setups and these combos. And it's like, wait a minute, my guy. Are you actually trying to set me up for something right now? Sleep. You've seen him before. You know what his plan is. He wants to zone, keep people out, grapples away when he's in danger. Hopefully we see Cyborg again, you know, quite exciting and an underrepresented character this early in the game, but clearly effective. No idea which direction Eli is going to go in, but no. it should be fun. It depends on the character he kicks, picks. He may be setting us up for a loop. I don't know. We're we going with Superman, Legacy, Fundamentals, all in play here. Superman, not much has changed. A few drastic. A few things here and there, but for the most part, forward two, three, breath pressure is the same. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to anticipate if your opponent's going to go for a fast move or if he's going to wait it out and just let you forward two, three, breath him under to death. Right, and these men getting right into it. The setup, Eli trying to avoid the rockets, but instead jumps into the Nova Blast, and that Roomba is still coming, sir. Sleep so oppressive when he knows he has his security blanket following him. And a great stand one to scoop. Right, trying to get some zoning going up his own. Superman trade is out. He's going to enhance the damage on all of his moves and break armor in case Sleep goes for that meter burn 4 3 again, but instead simply waits it out. He's going to play the zoning battle, fill the screen with Nova Blast, and there we go. The air is out, crosses up the dirty stuff. That's a from very Sleep. dirty setup. In that situation, you have to block against the character, not against the Roomba. That's a, that's a very solid. Um, mechanic throughout all fighting games. Absolutely, and you see a lot of players utilizing that. Any character who has cross-up move potential with the projectile to follow is an easy cross-up setup. Usually you see it through the meter burn roll, but in Cyborg's case, he has a grapple hook that allows him to escape with that one hit of armor. So you need to be wary of which side he's on at all times. All right. And the anti-air from Sleep, piling up the damage now, piece by piece, into the uppercut. Sleep looking so dominant right now, so composed, in control. And Superman's got his back up against the corner. 
sleep, just continuing in a zone, play the full screen game, summon out his trait. And the bomb covering both land and air with the Nova Blast and that character power air bomb. This is zoning seemingly too much. Eli the Curry cannot find an answer. Hasn't had a chance to even get close and start any pressure of any kind. He does get rid of the first bar. And what I want to see more from Eli the Curry is I want to see more zaps. Zaps, even though everyone's complaining about how much it got nerfed, a slow moving projectile at that range or that height is probably a good way to make Cyborg double think every jump back projectile he's going to throw out. I'll tell you one thing, Cyborg will never double think. The minute he gets that character power out, it's party time. He can advance and play the screen in any way he wants, which he knows that bomb is coming, regardless. Oh, yeah. Once it's summoned, Oh, an unfortunate lands on the bomb. Keeping it safe, grapples out. Gonna see more forward two, three breath pressure from Eli. Trying to work his way in, but Sleep doing a fantastic job of avoiding Sleep's uh, zoning tools. The laser's not getting much mileage of anything. I mean, if you look at the health, they're almost even. Superman down a little bit, but he needs heat zap. Heat zap, not all the time, but just, you know, in the right spots. Oh, he was in business there, but Cyborg with the grapple escape. So elusive is Sleep. Escaping at each time, spins the bar to get in. Eli the Curry's had enough. Oh, we're back to the lasers. This is still a very close match. All right, piece by piece. And again, Cyborg covering his gaps. Superman liking to jump that air Nova Blast in the straight direction with the Rockets to follow on the backside. Eli the Curry needs to show better patience. If not, these Nova Blasts will continue to chip away at his health. Eli trying to find an answer, and Cyborg just... That was a great plan to get out of the corner, rush in, and then grapple out. And Sleep having none of it, challenging Eli up close. Oh, and the nice little stagger right there. The overhead boot, and the wake up super, because why not? Why not? You know, at this point, I approve. Wake up super, it is what it is. Maybe he could have treated us with a beautiful cinematic, but instead he's just going to take his L in grace. I don't think he's down just yet. And, you know, even if this match does not go the re his way for the rest of the duration, he still has one more match to go down. This is a first to three because this is in the Injustice Pro Series. First to three all the way around. And Eli goes down 2-0. Sleep looking so dominant. This Cyborg Smile on his face. Yeah, the oppression that is the zoning from Cyborgs. Eli the Curry can't find his way in. I thought that was a very dangerous move by Sleep there to, to go for the meter in back three, considering Superman had his trade up. Absolutely. I guess he expected it to hit first. And there we go, the wake up. Rise and grab and gets a combo. Okay, it's better than nothing. It's a start. It's a start. I want to see more breath. Forward two, three breath, not forward two, not forward two, three sweeping eye laser. There meter you go, the meter burn back three, three expecting a wake up. Getting some decent combo damage and sleep. Shouldn't be much now. And dive bombs directly into the Ruma. Superman is strong, but clearly not that strong to destroy the explosion. Instead, sets himself up. Now, one health bar away from the loser's bracket. Whoa! And what a read. Maybe he is a god. Maybe this was all for dramatic value. And he's saving the best for last. Dive bombing into things on purpose. He's going to hit us with three real master comebacks. Clearly, this is for the fans. Eli the Curry finally connecting with some lasers, walking his way in, smart, dashing now. Where was this? It's happening now, but I think it's a little too, I think it's too little too late. Oh, here we go. Peter Burn, Ice Breath, he gets drops the, the combo. But gets the follow-up throw. Eli the Curry looking stronger than he has before. Definitely too little too late. Here comes the Roomba. He's got to watch out. Roomba's following Cyborg, has his back. And it's here still it is. coming. Dive bomb. No punish by Cyborg. Double stick gets the zoning back up. Grapple hooks, stays out of the corner. Yeah, and this is going to be all she wrote. It's going to be really hard for Eli to Curry to avoid anything. A handshake and a huge smile. Shakes his head. That is the murder face. Can we get a still of that? Please, somebody <laughs> caption that. It's the face you make when you come to the stage with the R. Kelly half braids, half afro, circa 2002. TP2.com. He is. And here's a big treat for us all. Footwork. Sleep's former 
teammate? Yes, uh, if you take it all the way back, he's going to go on up against Hara's flowchart, a.k.a. Shaolin. He has multiple names, but he's hailing from the West Coast. Footwork coming down from the Midwest, Detroit, Michigan. Combo Breaker has attracted the players from all over the country. I forget the exact number of the amount of states who are in attendance, but we're all here trying to get a piece of the pie, and Footwork is going to take off the glove. That's him extending his power. He also has a thing where he wears the hat at a certain angle. You see the hat a on his head angle. now. Not quite Keep that in mind. Backwards. In between games, the angle of that hat will change. That unlocks the different variants of footwork. You have normal NS footwork, then he turns it a little bit to the left and it's corn footwork. Corn and then footwork. you turn it three more times where you can see into inside the back of the hat and it's shin footwork. His opponent has to take him to that level. But we'll see what Shaolin is able to do, a.k.a. the flowchart. And what better character to play if your name flowchart than Black Adam? Black Adam. I feel like I've seen every single Black Adam come out of pools yesterday. Yes. Black Adam, Aquaman, and that's about it. I don't know. I don't know what just happened. All right, right. so Man. having a little problem with the system. Footwork checking himself, making sure his long sleeve is pulled up at three fourth quarters of his forearm. Perf yeah, the perfect little ridges right there on his elbow. Yeah, see, he had to readjust multiple times. Footwork, such so clean in his gameplay and also in his appearance, has to make sure things are right. But he goes back and listens to this later. <laughs> he knows he's, he's got to be camera ready. He knows it. He knows the camera's on him. It's, it's stuck. Okay. Oh, we got Sonic Fox in the background, scoping out the, the talent, or not. All right, All right. yeah, go ahead. Just All right, guys, we're going to take a really, really quick break. Please don't go anywhere while we re restart the console. And uh, again, thank you so much for watching Injustice 2 Pro Series, brought to you by PlayStation 4. And I'll let you know if Footwork's hat changes any angle.
All right, welcome back. Quick, it's quick. But before we get back into the match, we're going to have a quick replay to show off more of sleep zoning and space control with Cyborg against Eli the Curry. All right, and you can see here, starting off at the back three, and he's just completely dominating. Roomba covering his traces. And the dive bomb right into the Roomba. He just had Eli the Curry just... He had conditioned no, he, for everything. He's trying to escape, but either way he goes, Sleep covered all of his bases through the entirety of that set. And just a funny little look into oh yeah. desperation when you dive bomb into your death. <laughs> dive bombing, Roomba explosion. Look at that blood. Look at the detail. Yeah, and a nice little uppercut to the back of the head. You know, they've had enough of Superman's nonsense. All right, and these guys are warming up, ready to go. System is on and activated. All right, so Flowchart's going to go Superman. You know, the California requirements, Superman Black Adam. I feel like that's always been a rule in California. For sure. Even no in question. Injustice 1. <laughs> oh, and we see Sleep going with Dark Side. I'm sorry, Footwork going with Dark Side. Yeah, I, part I of that. The replay with part Sleep. of the pre-order crew. Omega beams everywhere, slaps in a beautiful animation, mixing it up. Use the teleport to avoid the Superman punch, but instead puts itself in the corner. You have to be very careful when you're actually going to use those high beams from dark side. You cannot be in forward two range. And what preparation from Flowchart was ready for that low stump from the air. Footwork's going to get the grab, putting Flowchart into the corner, and the wake up rising grab because why not? Why not? If it works, That's keep doing it. Justice. Oh, oh man, the forward two three. When he drops the, the combo. Yeah, it's giving Footwork a chance to escape. The Omega beam's a little too close. Opening himself up for danger. Push black on the breath. Doesn't want anything to do with that oppressive Superman pressure in the corner. And wake up rising grab once again. All right, Darkseid getting something going. And again, Superman just bullying him into the corner. And Darkseid flipping it over. Going for a combo. Ambiguous jump in. Yeah, big stump. Catching that low meter burns it. Doesn't quite get the cancel on the second stump. And too close. That high Omega Beam whiffing. Allowing Flowchart to punish. This is not good, not good for footwork. This world is fine. He's relying way too much on him not crouching. And, you know, a, a very experienced player is going to crouch all those high Omega Beams. They don't look high, but they just travel high. You got to kind of have to ignore the visual hip, the visual effect of it. All right, summons the minion and sends him overhead from full screen. The instant stomp, smart stuff from footwork. As he knows, Flowchart is looking to anti air him on the jump, coming down with that low stomp attack. No clash and no rollout available for footwork, but he does have one rollout with two bars and he holds onto it. Plus frames and spins the meter to break Flowchart's armor. And a full combo punish goes for the poke instead, allowing footwork a second chance at life. And the back dash just not good, not a good, a good enough evasive tool to get him out of all that. Superman wins. All right, so footwork is representing team no surrender. Uh, Work with us as we get that right in as footwork. Begin. And we're going to go right into game two. Teleport as footwork. Gets the overhead. Smack on the head. Spins the bar for the extension. And such beautiful combos from right here. Just Omega Beams. Dark side. Such a cool design and true looking boss character. And Superman with the forward 2 3 barrage in trade. Now in trade, he does do more damage. He can cancel into plus frames. And he can break armor on one hit. So you have to be very, very aware of what Superman can do when he's swinging and he's glowing already. All right, the double knees. Enough time to summon the minions. Zoning heavy. Omega Beams filling the screen and footwork with that chop. Staggers it into the throw. And no sirree, that Omega Beam in the air. The meter burn meter, version yeah. covering every space in the air. A little zigzag. Dark side showing off the control of his Omega Beams. Nowhere to hide in that situation. And Superman just... Superman punching his way in, cancels into his trait, back three into a transition. We're going inside. Yeah, footwork a little greedy, trying to teleport his way out, but Flowchart with the great meeting timing, and again, footwork with the quick low out of the air. Doesn't quite get the full combo, but gaining a lot of mileage out of that meter burn low stomp. And getting a lot of mileage on that magic pixel. Brought him all the way inside and all the way past half health. Right, Omega Beams keeping it safe. And I mean, when you're going up against Dark Sky, you look at this guy. This man is walking with his hands behind his back. He blocks with one hand behind his back. And I'm not sure if he's been potty trained, but he teleports out. They don't have bathrooms wherever he resides. 
<laughs> Instead, putting Superman in the corner. No clash. All right, finally. Waits a little too long, and we, we touched on that we earlier. Did. Yeah, he could have clashed a little bit sooner, especially considering he had all that meter. No reason to hold on to it and just keep getting hit. All right, filling the screen once again. Omega being the minion is out. Overhead minion into the space control and gets open up. Gets the jump in, but does not connect the string on the ground. This is not good. That was a big opportunity miss, but he gets another one. Goes in a tree. Back three. Jump nice. in. And let's see where it leaves him. We have an even game now. Flotar taking his time. Teleports out. The overhead on the connection. He has the bar meter to spin. Great big man punch into the ground and an air escape. But not enough distance in between his footwork with the easy reaction. Getting that down punk upon oh, Superman's man. landing and securing the game. Very good presence of mind by footwork all over it. Footwork at the high beams. And I love this adjustment. That first match looks so, so hot, so heavily in Flowchart's favor. And Footwork, being the amazing player he is, adjusting and adapting the down two And that was beautiful. Did you see the dark side dance moving back and forth and squatting? That's something they do in outer space. Um, not the, sure what the club. The outer space shimmy? Yeah, for sure. Not sure what club, you know, dark side attends, you know, because he's everywhere. <laughs> Probably Club Omega. There we go. I'll Club name Omega. it that, and yeah, we'll, and we'll keep it there. The Club Omega shimmy. Yeah, Superman denied entry. I know he thinks he runs the entire universe, but right now Darkseid does not care about his regime or his Iron Fist on the planet. Instead, coming down to dominate, summoning the minions, and it is party time. That was a great block, though. Yeah, that was full combo punishable, but uh, Flowchart missing it in the corner now. 4-2-3 breath pressure teleports its way out, and Footwork looking extremely strong in the third game. Looking for something, and Footwork's not giving it to him, not giving him an opening, but there it is. He gets the forward three connection, uses the trait, meter burn frog. And goes for the forward three, and Footwork way too scared to press buttons after that big, big forward three on block. Yeah, respecting the plus frames after that overhead starter now, and Flowchart trying to run it back desperately. Oh no, spins the meter trying to throw the bench, but Superman isn't going to sit on any chair. Are you crazy? Look at my damage. I am Superman. And before it got any worse, Footwork had to clash. It's just like that. Flowchart is back in business. All right, and Footwork used, forced to use his clash, but gets 25% back for his troubles. All right, mixing it up, that full screen low laser in conjunction with that overhead meter. And we have mix-ups through zoning. Such a wonderful option. And Darkseid's going to use the chop into the grab. We get a steal of Omega Beams. And we need to let Flowchart know to not hit restart match and let the outro play. Yes, please, please. My man. And, he, and that last that last round, I want to talk about the two different mindsets between clashing. Footwork there, used the opportunity to clash as soon as he could. Maybe he waited a little too long in the combo, but Flowchart, he, he, he lost that last match with his clash. Clash readily available, and it did not help him at all. All right, well, here's the character switch. Firestorm in the building. Two minds are, in fact, better than one. As he tries to summon the professor's knowledge to help him complete this run back against Footwork. The Molten Trap on the whip punish. A little combo extension. Dropping combo hasn't really slipped into fire, uh, Firestorm, but Footwork not respecting the meter burn option on the Molten Trap. Instead, gets opened up. And then the tide has turned. His turn, Darkseid trying to get something going with the stops, and he gets it going with the teleport. Yeah, nice avoidance of that fireball. Now full combo of his own, trying to fight back his footwork. And Darkseid's such a boss. Great, a beautiful combo. <laughs> what a great ender to any combo. But footwork's in a bad spot right now. He gets out of the corner, though. Yeah, the meter burn roll in conjunction, in conjunction with the wake up knee. These guys avoiding each other with punish with that molten trap. Firestorm able to place it where he needs to, close, medium, and far. And the mix-up, back one into overhead, back one into Molten Trap, 50-50 of the most basic variety, gaining a lot of mileage now. The footwork not giving up, trying to jump his way in, face the button. Oh. He's going to keep it unclashable, back three into back three, and Firestorm putting in the work now seems to be the answer so far. Back three into back three, or no, four three into back three. And all unclashable damage. Once he meter burned it, he was there was nothing Footwork could have done. Possibly maybe rolled out. I didn't really see how much meter he had left. Dude, that wind pose is so beautiful. Firestorm just spinning around, just having fun. Letting us know that at any time he can simply nuke everybody and just destroy the entire Earth. Like, what's up? 
very, very powerful stuff. All right, footwork this time going more offensive. Instead of zoning, trying to work his way in against Firestorm. I like the switch, avoiding the Molten Trap. Oh, and the Torpedo, no punish. This time blocks it, gets the throw piece by piece. So quick, and I know the round just started, but it's very easy to see the adjustment and game plan from Footwork as he tries to deal with the Molten Trap, but instead gets opened up from the overhead. Molten Trap and Footwork tried to punish it. He didn't think he was going to meet her, Burnett, and this is a bad spot to be in the corner. Tries to knee out, but wow. to no avail. And great blocks from Floatchart now. Great teleport to avoid. Still gets splat down with that overhead slap. Firestorm working his way in. And a great throw by Footwork turning the ties, and oh. a teleport into the corner for a full combo. All right, this should be big damage. Is he going to get the wall bounce off of the elephant? He does not. The Gorilla City Amusement Tour is open today. Pain is not here to <laughs> shut everybody down. But instead, Firestorm doesn't want to quite show him the area, but instead torch him and make good work out of that molten trap. Minions are out. They came to enjoy the show. Gets the cross up into the back slap and keeps it unclashable even at such a huge I want, life yeah, bar that, that's very risky. Very risky stuff, especially considering that, you know, Firestorm has Drait ready to go yeah. and Footwork, need, uh, Footwork needs to keep his Clash in mind. Clash is a very good tool against, um, Foot against Firestorm. And Footwork there combining the Omega Beam for the combo flowchart on the uh, Clash. Before that, he was going for throws. He went for short combo strings, nothing extended because he really didn't want Float Trot to clash. But now that it's out of the way, opens him up with the back one, but does not commit, but instead gets opened up himself. Float Trot dropping the combo. We are in pressure situations. Two games of two now, going down to the wire. Footwork still has clash in tow and the meter advantage. So out. Here's oh, a chance. Here we go. Is he going to use this clash or is he going to go keep unclashable? No, he had no choice. He had to do it. That was the first hit that he could have actually clashed. Very smart play by Footwork. Yeah, What's he going to do? And it also cancels out Firestorm's level 3 activation, so he won't be regenerating health. Have the added bonus of pop-ups from the overhead and low strings or the extended damage. And now we are back to neutral. The game plan going back to what it was at the beginning. Omega Beans flooding the screen. Minions are out looking for the teleport. No cross-up. Instead, overhead low and Footwork working his way down the lame stuff but he goes in with the overhead he didn't expect it wake up knees footwork footwork on the oh in the molten trap flow chart back to business will he end the combo in the restand no he drops it instead this time footwork showing the patience the combo punish but only goes for the poke down to the wire omega beams high and footwork clutching it out taking it three games and two great poise great adjustment by both players firestorm seemingly the answer a little too late giving up that those two games with Superman and Footwork able to avoid the choke, as we've seen so many comebacks down from 2-0. And I think I think the, the biggest part of Flowchart's downfall was he had two very big drops yes. in that last game, huge, and he didn't lose by that much. He could have forced the clash a little bit sooner. He could have had access to the blue flame because be Footwork's clash did take away his his trait. He had trait ready to go. He had trait active, and then right after the clash, it was just completely yeah. gone. At the end, he got the molten trap to connect with the meter burn. Had he completed that combo and ended in the molten trap, he gets about 300 damage and a restand, which leaves him at advantage to do whatever he wants. But instead, he allowed Footwork to get up, gave him the spacing he needed, and Footwork took advantage. Two huge drops that definitely destroyed him. Now on your screen, a uh, man you might have heard of. Mido. Sonic Fox, we're just going to leave it at that. And his opponent, the Midwest secret weapon, Jared Johnson, came up late in MKX fa uh, fame. A, a dude who we haven't seen him much. Okay. But once he came to his first event, he got hooked, and he started coming to more and more. The online warrior stepping into the offline realm, trying to make that name for itself. And he has the biggest task ahead of him that anyone could ever have. Sonic Fox in pools. Again, I preach how this could be the makings of new legends. Hey, you could say that this is the biggest task in front of him, but this is also the biggest opportunity in front of Absolutely. him. Absolutely. Taking someone out like Sonic Fox would do huge, huge amounts of upsets, rumblings, Every, everyone would go absolutely nuts. And it's definitely not far-fetched. Combo Breaker is a tournament that Sonic Super Fox has girl. yet to win. That's right. All the accomplishments he's had we fell down to Dizzy in 2015 at Combo Breaker. Dropped to Dr. Stabs in pools last year, was eliminated by Raptor. 
and Lost Foxy it. Grandpa won that tournament for Mortal Kombat X. And here we are in Justice 2, brand new game. Sonic Fox looking to shake the NRS Combo Breaker curse. He can't even win the auction tournaments, you know. And he can't win the first, oh no, this is, he can't win the first hit on a button check. Sorry guys, got excited. <laughs> no, and he can't win the auction tournament. Lost to Dragon both times. Yes. But it is what He's it cursed. is. He's cursed everyone. All right, so Sonic Fox straight business mode. Dead shot it is. Jared Johnson going with Supergirl. Her mobility, air control, and teleports. And she has quick lasers to fight the zoning. Fight the zoning, but Sonic Fox hitting him with those green bullets, not letting her build any kind of meter. The green bullets take away any meter on hit. And there's the meter burn rifle. And to keep in note, headshots close, a trait, excuse me, only works with his wrist cannon. So the meter burn low rifle will not have the added effects of whatever uh, variation of trait he's using. Jared Johnson trying to block, couldn't block for too long, gets opened up. Sonic Fox drops the combo, wakes up with the throw, changes corner position. And the double wrist shot flicking that wrist. And the snipe shooting poor Kara right in the face, taking that first life bar. Sonic Fox in complete control here. Look at all this meter he has. He's the full screen, the real estate between him and his opponent. And here we go, Super Go, getting it started with the freeze combo, keeping him in the corner. Where is the mix up? All right, into the loop. How does Jared finish him with the hard knockdown? Goes for the standing three. Tries to interrupt the poke a little too far ahead on the mind game. Sonic's just gonna spend his time blocking. Tries to toss the interactable. That quick shot a little too fast for it. Check out the flick of the wrist and the quick little dance that dead shot does. And the overhead. And I think Sonic Fox is absolutely okay with trading laser. Oh, oh goes with straight the back three confirmed into the super bank, bang, a punch, a stab, a back elbow. Give me my knife back. Hold the rest of these bullets. Let me stab you one more time. And dead shot's like, KP, look, I do a lot of work and you can't keep up with me. I just mauled her. Give me my money. The contract has been completed, and Sonic Fox is up one game to zero. What an animation, Sonic Fox. Right, the background bounce misses the drop kick. Deadshot doesn't really quite know how to use his feet. Everything is all guns at this point. Wow, and the down two juggle into Trey, activating that meter train character power. So Terry Johnson has the opening. He's not going to give Sonic Fox an opportunity to use that trait. He's in control. He's hitting him. Pile driver walking Sonic Fox closer and closer to the corner. Let's see how Sonic Fox reacts. Is he going to just jump at him, or is he going to meter burn roll into the center of the screen and buy himself more real estate? All right, bang, bang. And Jared Johnson getting a little antsy, going for that meter burn teleport. Luckily, no punish. But this time, the punish on that power bump. And again, Sonic Fox OK with, with trading high shot with, with laser. As long as he tech rolls, he's going to be fine. He's going to get up in time to shoot for and shoot and keep trading, trading, trading. Sonic right. Fox tech rolls every single time. Just every flicking it and mixing it up with that meter burn, stepping forward with the punch. Jared Johnson very much in there. Doesn't quite get the conversions he wants. Has the meter now. This could be enough. If not death, it will set up into the next mix up. Standing reset. No, he lets him drop. And Sonic Fox gets up with a button and tosses him back into the corner. Death and he's roll. getting. Animation so visceral. Oh, yeah. Nice punish. Sonic Fox on the tech. Trying to mix it up. And Jared Johnson, no, not enough chip on the breath. Spins the bar to keep it safe. Overhead. Walks Sonic. forward. Big boy knee. And Sonic trying to gain as much mileage out of this health bar as he most possibly can. Oh, man. And not like this. Jared Johnson's only one hit away. Meter burns the cement. A little bit short. Deadshot, not quite interested in construction, but in the demolition of equipment everywhere, shooting up everything, tossing all of the interactables, and whittling down your health bar with his infinite supply of bullets. The trick shot, catching Jared on the jump, and Sonic Fox up two games to zero. Now is Jared going to stick with this character? Is he going to stick with Supergirl? He does have the option to change the stage, but he decides to stay on it. Begin. I think that's an okay decision. This stage does have a little bit less interactables to, to get you out of corners. Sonic Fox with a down one into the meter burn bound. I'm sorry, into the background bounce. Yeah. And I'd like to see Jared try to utilize Supergirl's mobility. She has an air dash, you know, can cover a lot of distance and, and mess up the timing on, on Sonic's, you know, wrist shots. And she also has a teleport that can go right next to your opponent, hit your opponent from any anywhere on the screen. All right, this time gets to confirm that back one. Such a quick bid, punching dead shot right under the chin. Gets things going. Hasn't been able to complete the corner combo yet or the setup he wants. Hard knockdown and the wake up knee raw from Sonic Fox. No meter burn or anything, just unsafe as can be. But sometimes you just got to do it. Hey, he knew it was going to hit, so why meter burn it? 
and the down and the, the big rifle. Really, nothing he could have done in that situation unless he already preemptively jumped. And Supergirl trying to even this out with the lasers gets the meter burn in the corner. Forward three, and he stops the, the he stops the rollout from Sonic Fox, but Sonic Fox does get out of the corner. Yeah, that was a beautiful thing. He was able to get two bars, but now his health is just gonna get his meter's getting drained. Oh my goodness! A great wake up by Supergirl. Jared trying to work his way in, slowly. Trading lasers now. Hits laser. Buys himself a little bit more, and, or it takes away a little bit more and more of Sonic Fox's uh, real estate. Yeah, these trades are definitely not in his favor. As he gets pushed back with the meter burn right from no air mobility. Oh, and then Aaron. Sonic Fox keeping it unclashable with that overhead into the gunshots. Again, punished. No, not this time. That wasn't clashable. That was clashable on the second hit, but Jared did not re uh, react fast enough. Yeah, and that's all she wrote there. Sonic Fox making quick word of Karazor L. Supergirl not able to get anything going. Jared's just gonna, you know, take his pad and walk off. Maybe look back and understand he left a lot to be desired. Didn't really expand on, on Supergirl's toolkit and uh, wasn't able to complete setups or get an opening when he did get the hit. So, man, that was was kind of rough. But I'm giggling because our next matchup, our next matchup. my man, winners qualifiers of this pool to advance to the top 48. We have Noble's Dragon versus New going York's. up the man who's here to defend Gorilla City. The Panda Global Boys are back in the building. Coach Steve with his Gorilla Grod versus Poison Ivy. Are you ready? Grod is good. Grod is great. Yeah, man. It's. It should be an interesting change of events. I haven't seen this matchup. I don't even know if anyone has seen it. Poison Ivy, a defensive wall. A defensive wall Bark with skin. A, a lot of full screen options. And she wants to keep you out. But Grodd has his primal rage ability where he just leaps. Just full leaps. screen. And he takes us on a walk. If he gets that combo coin, the big boot into the lunge. Uh, yeah. And he loops it. He's mixing you up, grabs it. Big damage, huge swings, uppercuts, clotheslines, just so much power in this gorilla to match his intellect. But he'll be going up against one of the smartest players in the scene and Dragon with fantastic reactions and able to adapt on the fly quicker than just about anybody. Should be an interesting match. I mean, Dragon's had an immense amount of success in the MKX circuit. Yes. Uh, you know, constant grand finals with Sonic Fox and even some wins over him, wins over very, very well-known players, but Coach Steve is no slouch himself, coming from various other communities, a very well-known Street Fighter player, a very well-known Marvel player, and, you know, just involved in any fighting game scene in the New York area. And Coach Steve puts in his work. Coach Steve has those reactions. I think this match could go either way. This Absolutely. De definitely not saying that this is leaning towards Dragon. And what's interesting enough is Coach Steve is a returning legacy player. Yes. Dragon was not around for Injustice 1. Coach Steve dominating with Aquaman. Uh, Coach Steve, the the one and only person responsible for not letting Honeybee get into the Evo Top 8, yeah. which was a huge blow up. He eliminated me at that same Evo. What's up? What's <laughs> but, uh, up? Yeah, it's. Dragon is just a testament to prove that anyone can in fact do it. A lot of players were afraid that, oh, well, I didn't play Injustice 1, so all the legacy guys have a huge leg up and advantage. But no. Absolutely the not game true. Is successful. Yeah. You put the time in, the hard work and the dedication, and you can be in the same position. Now this is the button check, guys. Do not get excited. And yeah, I mean, look, here's Dragons are putting in work since day zero. Maybe even day negative something. We we don't know about that. Let's 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 not go there. But no, Dragons are putting in his work, and what you don't realize is, you know, all these other games, these fundamentals carry over. Uh, Dragon learning a lot from MKX, learning a lot about what frame data is when to swing, when not to swing, the mindset of an opponent, pick the ability to pick up on habits, and right. Coach Steve also has all those fundamentals. All right, and the patience, here we go, leaps in, and Coach Steve doesn't get the confirm, but instead slams Poison Ivy through the ground as we hear in front of the Gotham City streets. I almost called him Garambe. Garambe, I think that's fine. I think everyone at home's gonna like that. All right, well, she kisses a gorilla, Poison Ivy showing her range knows no bounds. And Pukey is out. Pukey this is gone. Let's go. Beats the plants out of her in a chest bump. Oh, and a great delay wake up by Dragon. Yeah, to avoid that secret sweep 
from Rod. Coach Steve with the primal leap in, going for the throw, and a lot of paces from both guys in air to air. Oh, Steve trying to look for that big boot to connect, but Dragon not moving in, not moving an inch. All right, jumps over, and a nice walk under from Dragon to avoid the cross-up. Trading pokes. Coach Steve with the boot, trying to stay patient in a little, a little, little karate sis, you know, a little push, learn some martial arts flavor from Poison Ivy. I think one of Grodd's greatest assets is that down one range. Oh, you don't want to flip out when you're in the corner and not when you're that early into the combo. Yeah, and that 4-3 was active enough to catch Grodd on his landing from the air escape. Gets the stampede. The meter burn back three and a big find to the face of the leader of the society. Grodd forced back at full screen. And even though we haven't seen much of a combo from Coach Steve, oh, the trade is active. Trade is active. Telekinesis powers are available. Yeah, that intellect trying to jump his way through Pukey, but he has to hold this. Sends him for the low launcher, walking in. Uses the air dash in a big flash. Gonna get the combo continuation. Spins the bar. Big boot. Gorilla Let's City go. stomp. Let's go into the restand. Let's go. Go, Steve. Where are we going? The overhead, but Dragon with the great reactions. And, and another great great reaction. Go, Steve, using all of the resources to fight back. Pokes shouldn't be enough for Chip. And there it is. The mayor of Gorilla City fighting his way back. Oh, and stomping on Skulls. Intimidating Poison Ivy, but Poison Ivy does not care, jumps in, Dragon ending it with a kiss. The secondary kiss, Dragon showing a little bit of appreciation for that Coach Steve combo. Here's some props, I'll kiss you, but I'll also damage you. Pukey is out and active. Coach Steve has to deal with this pressure so much you have to hold. Oh. And runs through, spins the bar. Full screen charge. And we've seen what happened when Gorilla, Gorilla, Gorilla oh, Grog gets one hit. I'm so hyped that I can't even pronounce his name. You know, we've gone to Gorilla City twice. Grog hasn't been there for the exhibition and the circuit to defend it, but instead he's in the Gotham City streets, streets fighting Poison Ivy oh. and Dragon using that fantastic spacing in control right now. Doesn't have the bar, but chip damage should be enough to get the job done very soon. Yeah, no, Gorilla God has absolutely nothing left on a pixel. Dragon cleans it up, takes the first match. He goes up one to zero over Coach Steve, and Coach Steve is no slouch. He's not gonna take this laying down. He's gonna adapt. He's gonna try to figure out what's going on. And it wasn't. It was. It was a very close match. He didn't. He did force Dragon to use his clash, but he did get something on the board. He did get rid of his first bar, and right now Coach Steve not doing a good job of adapting. He has to deal with. He has to just deal with Puki. He has to just hold down, take all this chip damage, and pick his battles. Go in very slowly and patiently. All right, and Dragon doing his best job to keep out, but makes a mistake, jumps in, and the big stump into the boot, the clothesline. Big 4-3, keeps him in the corner, does not elect to go for the transition. Great. And Poison Ivy, that back two, such a great tool. Better, you know, one of her advancing mids that allows her to play a footsie game. And Pukey getting the job done. All of that chip damage, Poison Ivy building so much meter in that sequence. Really, I barely wish the throw. All right, big, big boot. Coach Steve trying to kick his way in. Great reactions by Coach Steve. He saw Poison Ivy flinch, going for the full screen options, and he just was ready to just pounce in. All right, rushes in. Oh, and whips the jump. The the back two on that big boot, and Dragon making all the right decisions. You know, Coach Steve, once he gets going, he's able to keep that momentum up, but Dragon able to fight it and not let Coach Steve steamroll. But right now, big boy damage, fighting back. The stump into the boot goes into the clothesline. Stampede afterwards. Dragon doing a great job of blocking every mix-up after those loops. And Coach Steve, Steve leaves him in a standing position and goes either higher or overhead. Lower All right, overhead. and the pokes from Coach Steve trying to not let Dragon take too much of his life as he goes for this last hit. Oh, Pukey is out, uses the armor to fight through, doesn't do enough chip. He's got to hold this. He tried it, it didn't work, now he's just got to hold it and hang on, let Dragon get away with it. The bark skin won't be enough. Coach Steve looking for that secret sweep. He's taking no chip damage because of the bark skin. Oh, so smart, and instead, oh, 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 yeah, Coach Steve finally decides to come off of the meter, going for that meter burn stampede. And it looked like he caught Dragon backdashing, trying to avoid it, trying to avoid anything, just holding onto that magic pixel. And Pukey is out again. He is. Coach Steve trying to get the hit to make the trait go away, and he does successfully, and he's got Poison Ivy in the corner, backs up a little bit, and goes for the sweep. Yeah, the secret sweep, and he's going to have to work with no meter. The secret sweep, again, a lot of mileage. Outranging Poison Ivy's back too. He goes to the jump in but doesn't hit him. Gets right. the throw. And it's Coach Steve getting his damage the traditional way. Throws and single hits. Not much in the area of combos right now as he doesn't have the meter to extend anything. 
Need to run back three, does not connect. It was only a down one. Oh, and a great punish by Dragon, recognizing it, walking forward, and with punishing him as he lands on the ground. All right, now, big situ uh, situation here. Dragon has the meter advantage, elects to spin both bars to add 15% of damage, gets Pookie out immediately. Koshi tries to poke the secret sweep way out of range this time. All of this chip, all of this meter build, Koshi on his last legs is going to have a desperation moment, leaps in, preemptive jump. And Dragon is forced to use the Clash. Oh, he man. didn't have any meter quite yet. If he waited for one more hit, he might have earned it, but I think he was fine. And Coach Steve elects not to use it. All right, trades up. Looking for that damage, and wow, what a bait. Coach Steve out of meter now. I think Coach Steve did want him on the ground for that. that. Oh, he gets the jump in. Dragon has no Clash. Into the corner. What's it going to be? The poke. Trading pokes. Three seconds to go. The time is running out. Thanks. And Dragon. Takes the victory. Coach Steve, I don't think he was aware of the timer. He needed something, and he needed it fast. But Dragon instead goes for the poke. Secret sweep. Secure game one, yes. And Coach Steve does activate his trait. His telekinesis powers are at his disposal. He can use them, but Dragon gets it going. And yeah, that fourth. Combo. So much range. All right, jumps out, lunges. Yuki is alive. And the Nightshade getting the job done. No continuation on the combo, but instead going for the chip damage. Dragon building all the meter he can. Coach Steve jumps in, going for the oppression session. Slams three times into the corner. Oh, and a nice little toe kick. <laughs> Gorilla Crowd not ready, but instead uses the air escape, spins two meters to avoid certain punishment, and now has the combo going. Take a trip to Gorilla City. The mayor with the stumps. That was a really good air escape by Coach Steve. He realizes that in this match, he's actually going to build a lot more meter than Poison Ivy. Ooh, a great whiff punish. Nice cancel on that stampede. C Coach Steve mixing it up. Talk about footsies. Talk about spacing. Dragon having some of the best, but still mixed up. And the beatdown catches the escape. Gorilla Grodd feeling himself, pounding on the chest, stomping on the skull. Coach All right. Steve doing a great job of adapting. Dragon fighting it back. Nice shade is active. Coach Steve has to hold all of this. Takes the throw in the middle of all this block pressure. Oh, and Dragon going for the wake up. That is one of Poison Ivy's weaknesses. He has a wake up command grab, which you can simply duck on wake up. Nothing else. So once you knock her down, it's time to go to time, which you need to have such a great defensive presence. And Dragon clearly not giving Coach Steve much chance to bully him on Oki. Such great strength. Such great poise and dragon simply taking his time, keeping Coach Steve at bay. Coach Steve using, utilizing that down one, looking for the secret sweep there. And Coach Steve's in a really good spot right now, despite getting this great air escape. A dragon was ready and reacted with a throw. Fantastic avoidance from Dragon. Simply walking back and just activates Nightshade Raw in this situation, knowing Coach Steve wouldn't have the time to close the space. And that's a lot of chip, a lot of meter build. It's a lot of chip, but once Pukey's out and your feet are off the ground, there's really not much you can do about it. Dragon keeping it simple. And again, the avoidance on the crossover jump. He's done his homework and not letting Coach Steve have his way with any gimmick jump overs. And both players spin two bars. Coach Steve doesn't want to lose any more health than he has to. Trade is activated. Air dash is in. Air dash is back. He needs to get back in there. He needs to needs to get something going. And Pukey's back out. He goes for it. The cross up, throw into the corner. Dragon has no clash and no wake up. Throw again. Could this be the start of a comeback? Shimmy. And the oh, meter burn back me. three. Armors through, catches the air escape into the conversion. And Young Dragon, a 3-0 victory, advances to the winner's top 48. Coach Steve is also going to advance with a three-out system. He will be in losers. It's not the last you've seen of Gorilla Grodd, and certainly not the last you've seen of Ivy. Defense trumps oppressive, and the defense trumps oppressive offense. Grodd tried to get things going using the trait to analyze, uh, utilize air dashes and the tele telekinetic burst, but Dragon's defense too strong. That bark skin, nightshade, puke, drills. <laughs> It was too strong. And every time Steve left him in a standing reset situation, G Dragon was all over it. He guessed right every time. And now here we're going to check out this replay between Darkseid and Superman. Footwork just zoning, 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 just being in complete control. This, this was when Flowchart decided to just stick, stay away from this character, and he went for 
basically plan B. He, he didn't want to deal with any of the zoning. This is dark side. This is, these are the best lasers in the entire universe. Free. They're going to find you. Without, They're going to hunt you but, down. Yes, without question. It's so tricky. High, low, anti-air. EX covers the whole screen. And luckily, you know, Floatchart didn't have to deal with his super in which you can draw the laser yourself. Yeah. Unbelievable. Great zoning from footwork. And we saw what happened in that set. Best lasers in the universe. Free. No question. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Do not go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break. But thank you so much for watching Injustice Pro Series presented by PlayStation 4. Do not go anywhere.
All right, so welcome back. Right now, we're going to go to winner's final of another pool. Explosive match. Sonic Fox, CD Manny, Black Adam Mirror, and I don't know how I feel about this, but you are not supposed to cross the orbs. And in that screen, the Black Adam orbs were tucked into each other. They were. It may cause a rift in time and space. I don't know. Especially orbs that are that beautiful and that customizable. So, so this Sonic is Fox check. is on the player one side. He is in the white cape Adam. Going up against CD Manny, who tunes in, headphones on, ready to go. High profile. Who's it going to be? Black Adam Mirror. Let's go. Lightning everywhere. It's a classic match of old school versus new school. Sonic Fox representing new school, absolutely dominating the last three years of NRS games. And CD Jr., former MK9, devastating player. All right. Opens him up. Doesn't have the trait to cancel. But Manny, right now, going for the shimmy. Sonic Fox with the throw. Oh, and the shimmy of his own walks forward a little bit to bait a throw tech, but instead goes for that forward one string, gets so much damage, and now Manny fighting back. Mileage of his own. Very close match. Trading the forward one. Sonic Fox presses it faster the second time, and I can hear his laugh in my headphones, <laughs> giggling like a little kid that giggling. he is. Giggling. Giggling, knowing that he was just one or two frames a little bit faster than CD Jr., and CD Jr. answering right back, tying it all up. And the slugfest, back to back. Adam, what's it gonna be? Dive kick, whips the dive kick. This is definitely very even right now, but look at CD Jr.'s meter. He has so much of it ready. And Sonic Fox not giving him an opportunity to, to, to use it. And Hitting nice, him with the down one jazz hands. Nice punish on the dive kick over the EX Lightning. But man, all of that meter that Manny has, he hasn't been able to use any of it. A clash would work in his favor, but I assume Sonic is not gonna give him the opportunity to. Block and the raw Ow. lightning hands. I don't understand how that entire thing happened. CD Jr. did, oh, he's looking at buttons. I'm not really sure what's going on. Let's see if the meter burn does change. It was set on R2. I didn't see a single button change. I didn't so see a button change. We're looking, we're looking close, okay. CD Jr. Okay. Oh, and meter burn did change. Okay, so he went. And, you know, he played that first round so well. I don't understand how he didn't get through it. There's no, uh, there's no choice up to the player. Um, I believe that first match does still count no matter what. Oh man, so he caught a bad break. That win definitely does count. His throw button was reversed, so he wasn't able to take any throws or go for a throw of his own. And man, that match was that close with that hindrance. Manny might be closer to victory than we think. And Manny's looking really good right now. Forward one. Sonic Fox gets it going. Yeah, he just just respect the plus frames. It's just going in. The audacity to just risk disrespect and a great throw bait by Sonic Fox. CD Jr. up against the ropes. And these rounds, quick, explosive, oh, yeah. damaging, and a lot of forward one as Sonic Fox continues the combo of the meterless variety into the lightning bomb setup. And this is just a balling this time, throw button or not. Sonic Fox having his way, and the lightning ball for covers. Double wake up, spins two bars to keep the corner positioning. Manny fighting back, and no clash. No clash, there it is. Finally we see it. Manny's gonna be able to use this meter to get back either 15, 25, or 30% health. And he opts to use three bars. Sonic Fox uses zero, so Manny gets 30% back. Now with the, the explosive offense that Black Adam has, if Manny can land, first of all, let's take care of this first life bar. If he can land a hit or two on the next one, he can be very well back in business. And Sonic Fox doesn't even give up the first bar. Smart. Looking for the back dash, a smile, and the fur is tingling. You can see the ears rising in the back by themselves now. The hat has evolved. Has evolved. Since we last seen the it. Absolutely. And again, Manny finds himself in this right corner, but he turns the tides against Sonic Fox and puts him in the corner. Let's watch and see if he can dominate him and bully him like he did the last match, and he doesn't. He drops his combo. Sonic Fox completely capitalizes, pushing him to the other side of the screen. Oh, and big boy damage coming up here. There's the dive kick. 500 damage off of that starter. And just like that, his silver bar becomes red. One touch. Black Adam, one of the most damaging characters in the game off of any touch, air to air, off of a poke, from a dive kick. You know, this guy's just, you have to watch him. Your defense has to be on point. Try not to get opened up as Sonic Fox just did from that EX dive kick, but no conversion from Manny. 
And Sonic Fox trying to keep it unclashable. He doesn't want Manny to use his, cl his Clash to get anything back. So Manny needs to use his meter, realizing that Clash is not an option anymore. And Sonic Fox takes it. Devastating 3-0. Yeah, and you got to think about that first match. What happened? C uh, CD uh, Manny was looking so good. Yeah, it looked so promising, you know, with his throw button reversed. And then here we are talking about the next match already. It's... I can't explain it. Yeah, I'm not sure what really happened there. I, uh, he looks so good. But, all right, guys, hang on. We got a nice replay for you from everybody's favorite gorilla, Gorilla Grodd. All right, and right here we see Coach Steve using that telekinetic burst in the air, coming down to get the combo. That Grodd intellect so smart, enough to keep his opponent in so much hits done to get the job done. Although Dragon did come out with the victory, you see Coach Steve spacing as he dashed just close to enough to get enough radius on that huge burst hitbox to get this combo going as we take a walk to Gorilla City. The mayor keeping it stylish. Now watch the standing re the, now watch the standing reset and how successful Dragon was at avoiding every single one, seeing the forward three coming. But just look at that range, that psychic blast from Gorilla Grodd. And it's so easy to just dash in and confirm. And Coach Steve loops like no other man in the business. Yeah, man. So good. All right, so that is the end of the E block. The F block pools are checking in right now, so stick with us. We'll be right back as soon as we get those. Stuff.
Ketchup and Mustard here, and this is Combo Breaker 2017 for the Injustice 2 Pro Series presented by PS4. And uh, we're very, very excited to get some more pool matches underway. It's been quite an important tournament so far. Obviously, the, the first stop of the Injustice 2 Pro Series and started yesterday. Already had some really good games. Some of the top-level Netherrealm players are, to no surprise, coming here in force, trying to bag some of that cash prize and also points to place on the Pro Series leaderboard as it goes along. But this is day two, and we're about to get underway with, I believe, our first match so far, which is going to be TDS New Groove versus uh, Phoenix FGC. So, Injustice 2 as a talking point at the moment. Let's let's face it, the game is brand new. This game is fresh out of the box. A lot of these guys playing today, it's a matter of who's learned the most stuff early on and who's going to be good at putting all of that stuff into practice in a competitive setting with the limited experience that basically the whole world has had to the game because it only came out, well, basically a week ago. Well, it's a question of adaptation and how quickly you can get used to it because if you played the first Injustice, you've obviously got that kind of like familiarity curve. Uh, but that being said, there's plenty of new characters. Those that come back have had some changes. So I think it's kind of how much can you learn the amount of time that these guys have had. But there are obviously some favorites sort of shining through. We've seen a bunch of dead shots so far. A lot of people sticking with Aquaman and kind of their familiarity, I suppose, which isn't a huge surprise. But this could be a very interesting first game with Cyborg versus Deadshot. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and say I'm actually really happy that the first game commentating in the Pro Series is my favorite character, yeah. Cyborg on the left. Let's go. Now, they might, might not be. They might just be trolling with the button checks. Yeah, if, if this is we can always hope. We can so always hope. First of all, if this isn't a button check match and this is actually the matchup we're going to see, we all know Deadshot by now. Um, very sort of projectile heavy. He has really fast projectiles, and that's a very key element in this particular matchup. Cyborg is very similar to what he was. Now, they've gone for the fist bump. I think they're going to straight up rematch this. Um, in this matchup in particular, Cyborg is a really solid zoner in the game, and he zones very similar to what he did in the previous game. But in this game in particular, fast projectiles can tend to outzone him somewhat, and that's probably why we've seen him go in almost immediately. Well, the first take going with a down one, that's actually really handy. Deadshot getting so much mileage out of that meter, but if he's got a bar straight away, that's a meter burn. Rifle, that's just a lot of dangerous tools from far away already, especially back to that first bar. Wow, cancelling straight into the target acquired. A lot of slow setup on that, so I'm not sure if that was an execution error. So in this situation, it's going to be a bit tricky. Um, we, that's kind of why he's gone in for that grappling hook. He doesn't really want to get zoned out too much. He definitely also hasn't got the life lead to try and counter zone. So just like that, actually, going straight in. Wow, oh, no, he just gets hit by a raw back three and he meat burners. So you can see the damage increase. Gets a little bit of a trait set up there. So get a nice chunk of damage. That's a really nice addition for Cyborg. That character power just giving him a little bit of extra utility and also combining actually that new low string. Um, all looking really good, but this is kind of classic dead shot, right? Keeping that full screen, trying to establish range. The chip's going to do it because he's got bar for days on meter burn rifle, but with this next round, New Groove's got a ton of bar to work with. Well, thing is, like, Cyborg himself wants to play that long range game, but dead shot's projectiles are just so much faster that it seems quite hard for him to kind of start that momentum. Like, if he's kind of down on life and he's not really winning that projectile war, he kind of has ah. to go in, but it's Cyborg. He doesn't have the easiest ways of doing that. Grapple hook can be punished if he's waiting for it, but. I suppose I'm going to see what he goes to, but right now Phoenix is just all over. Big now, groove at the moment. yeah, the Rumba didn't really do a, a huge job of establishing sort of beating the range anyway, because he got like a huge amount of projectiles before it. He's going to have to use the clash here, um, but at this stage, it's looking pretty rough. I mean, both players spending three bars as well. That's going to be beneficial for Deadshot. He doesn't need meter. He can just sit there pretty all day. And, you know, he's going to build one bar. Look at the life difference as well. But you can really see how much he's already building. Yes, that low doesn't turn into a full combo, but the overhead, no, he drops the follow-up. So I do think trying to fight his way out means massively down on life. I mean, he, he got the life bar here. He has a couple of bars to work with, but now we've got Phoenix has that wager. If he wants to use it himself, and only just go up, doesn't even need it, and is going to take game one. That rifle is going to be completely guaranteed. So in a matchup like this, um, Cyborg, I think, does a little bit better if he can get a life lead on the flip side of that, because he when needs it comes, to get it early, right? Yeah, he doesn't when, need when, to spend the whole game trying to claw it back. When it comes to counter zoning Deadshot, it's actually the, di the new move, the diagonal blast. If you can catch a rhythm of straight shots and you can completely go over those and make them whip and actually trade in your favor with the diagonal shot, that's really useful. But you need the light lead first, otherwise the trade will never be in your favor. As you can see right there, right? He hits him but blocks in time because how fast it recovers. And again, not a huge surprise seeing Phoenix go to the blue the, the blue trait where these wrist cannon shots send your opponent full screen, which is clearly where he's kind of making the most of this game so far. Oh, tries to go for the trip guard, but New Group doesn't commit too much. No challenge on the wake-up knee so far. Actually got away with 100% of those in this match. And again, yeah, doesn't really damage. Just send him full screen all day. Meter burn rifle is going to push back. And this is a very tricky situation. A nice use on the meter burn roll. He has got a couple of extra bars if he wants to go for it again. But in this situation, I'm not sure. He needs to really stay in when he can. Try to open up with a meter burn forward three. But I don't think 
Phoenix is really in a situation that he's kind of worrying about. Oh, oh. no, the wake up plows straight through it. I think I like, I like that Arnslow, just to keep him in the corner. Unfortunately, he kind of corners himself here, so might kind of regret that, but he did manage to take the life bar, so now he's kind of got that life lead we were talking about earlier on. I don't really think that Phoenix is actually going to try and establish corner pressure, though. He's probably going to spend the whole of the round. Look at that bar! He's got four bars of meter! Also, just so the sheer amount of space he's got behind him, too. Oh, wow, oh no. just a 4-3 as well. This will be a massive amount of damage, and Nukru can't wage it because he hasn't got enough bar to get anything but hurting himself. Now, I think elements of a bit of muscle memory there. The, the down back two, that uppercut, isn't actually a wake-up attack for Cyborg in this game. Um, his only wake-up attack is the takedown. But because it was in the first game, understandably, in the spur of the moment, trying to go for it. Oh, wow, and there's the anti on the grappling hook. Phoenix is just looking really comfortable at the moment. And there's that sort of diagonal shot, trying to put in some work, but at the same time, I just don't think he's got the health to work with too good. Even, even taking the trade, right, like that, gets the grapple hook, but he took oh. so much damage at the same time, I just don't know if it was worth it. That was a really smart push block at the very end. He only really needed one more hit, so spending that bar just to guarantee it. If he did anything other than crouch there, that straight shot was going to do it, especially with the health he had left. Now, in this situation, if he does play other characters, this might be where we see a character change because what he's currently doing with Cyborg, I think, just isn't working out. He hasn't really got a consistent answer for Deadshot when he gets in. He's been trying to jump over, make the wake up with, trying to armor forward three it, but he's not actually sat there and blocked it. Yeah, he's Sorry, gone back to he's kind of hovering over. Maybe Black Canary here. He kind of hovered over the dark side, not really sure. Canary kind of, she has that massive damage when she gets in, but kind of at the moment, the general rule of thumb for her is she does kind of struggle versus zoning archetypes. And obviously, that is kind of what Deadshot is to a T. I but think when it, comes Canary. To, when it comes to zoning, though, it, it really at this point doesn't get any better than Deadshot. So if it's a matchup that the character potentially struggles yeah. with, or at least at this stage in the game, right? But at the same time, Deadshot is already such a popular character. There's no reason to kind of not be ready for the matchup when you come to, to combo break here. Because you, like, you've probably fought Deadshot I, once I, or twice before I think pretty much this. everyone in this tournament was going in prepared for Deadshot and Aquaman and Black Adam. You know, the characters that have been super popular. But now this is like the extra tail in the matchup. So this is when you know that a Deadshot player is playing keep away effectively is what trait they t they tend to use when they have far away. And that's why we see the blue trait, because one shot sends full screen, and it's keep away city from that point but on. Speaking of that though, the Canary Cry, that max level trait, that Black Canary really needs to kind of get those, that, that full way in, that full stun. If it trades with a dead shot bullet, you don't actually have time to go in and get a full combo, and we already saw oh, that the reset. before. But a nice reset attempt here, he's actually gonna steal the life bar back. Yeah, and that's actually super important. Getting that air tech out of dead shot, getting that meter out of his arsenal. Got caught by the overhead again. You wonder if he's going to get hit by that once more. Nice catch on the sweep as well to catch him blocking low. Oh, oh! Wow, that down one getting so much mileage out of that moment is Phoenix. Just sat there and did nothing. I'm like, probably waiting for some sort of option. Oh, oh no! no! That's a horrendous trade. Not in his favor at all, though. This round was Match looking point. really good for him, though, but Phoenix just managing to just shoot his way out of it. And there's the blue trait again. Just look at this. That full screen game. That's what he wants. And especially against a character like Black Canary. We've already seen the damage that New Groove is able to do. Nice meter bone roll into a jump in. And that's actually really good because it pushed, it's pushed him towards the corner. Okay, so it's still going to be match point, but I think at this stage, he hasn't actually lost as much health in this next round situation as he did when he was Cyborg. So I think the character picks worked out, but you wonder if it's too little too late. Oh, he's also in a situation that he's got a ton more bar as well. And a block escape, push block coming out for Phoenix. That was super late as well. Oh, jumps over, that's a full jump in. That could be huge damage, doesn't confirm it. There but a go. wonderful read on the anti-wake up. Canary cry. Oh, goes to the restand. Oh, catches him ducking. Oh, tries to go for the cute stuff. Actually, no solid punish or attempt on that. So he's not gonna get punished too hard. No full combo as well. Hang on, this might be a lifeline. Oh, this is exactly what New Groove needs. He needs to get this corner pressure on deck. And at the same time, Phoenix, he can't afford to wager. He hasn't got any bar. He's going to guarantee himself some health loss. Oh, no, but he's getting some of this corner pressure of his own. Really good clash, because this is going to be guaranteed health back for New Groove. And he doesn't have to spend all of his bar. He can hold on to some of it if he wants. The weird thing there, actually, was that Phoenix didn't wager in the corner. If that combo finished, he actually would have got KO'd there, but opted not to, saved it on the wake up, and he's actually still keeping him away. What's going on? Oh, they're blocked from down one again. A little bit of chip damage is all he needs, and that jump in is going to seal the deal. New Groove, looking like this character swap, is doing a lot for him at the moment. This could be familiarity. Maybe he's just a bit more used to Canary versus Deadshot. But at the very least, now for the first time, Phoenix is kind of forced to show what his defense looks like. When, he, that's, basically, that, 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 when he's that's not going to be the trading towards the damage. That's one of the big observations here, because when we saw the Cyborg Black pick, Canary. Although he actually managed to get in and close in space, his tools up close and his options didn't seem, I guess, as fruitful as when he now picks Black Canary and gets in for the same result. However, when he actually lands that hit, he seems to be a lot more comfortable up close. 
but if he loses this game, you know, wow. he's going to be thinking about it. Should I have gone Black Canary at the very start? That was a really brave forward three, though, as well, to start off the new group. It's going to get him the first hit and a chunk of damage, but at the same time, Phoenix has got him exactly where he wants him. Waste, that must have been an execution error. He's been going for meter burn rolls from full screen the whole time, and that must have been what he was going for. He's not actually been punished too hard, though. It wasn't really for a full combo, but the staggers into 50-50. I mean, bear in mind, Deadshot, he's got keep away for days, but he's got Mix, too. Oh, opened up by the low again. Wake up, wake up knee is going to connect, but at least it's going to get him out of there. I think those jump backs actually are probably to scout out that advancing uh, Canary Cry kick there. Or Black Canary kick, I should say. Really this trying to establish. Th th this is exactly what he needs to do. And again, getting that free space, popping the tray. This is the situation he wants. Ah, oh wow. But that that's the strength of the blue tray. If you do try and meter burn roll through and you get tagged by just one of those meter burn ricochet shots, it's going to send you full screen. Meter burn rifle connects. That's going to do a ton of damage by itself. The canary cry gets completely wasted. That is the worst kind of situation New Groove can find himself in. And right now, match point to Phoenix. And uh, losing the round on that too is going to take the whole round for the canary cry to get fully charged once again, at least for another few seconds. No, he can't be happy with that trade. I mean, look, this Canary Cry hasn't even finished recharging already, and we're, like, well into the second life bar. Now he's got it, though. He's got so much life to make up, though. I mean, it's not really a meter advantage, but he's got so much health. Oh, Here we go. Jump in. This, could be, this is going to be a full combo. How much damage? Is he going to use the restand here or cash out? Splat into setup. Oh, Ooh, trying wait. to bait the wake up, I think. Caught by the overhead again. Now, that's going to be really important later. I actually think Phoenix is... That was a really good meter burn roll, especially to throw to the corner, too. Phoenix has ate every single overhead off that string. Every single one. Oh, that down one. He's taking the 50-50 off it. No, misses the combo, but still has a lot of damage. Just adding up very quickly. Good anti-air. Now, the uh, the drop combo there into the whiff punish. This could be a pivotal change, but again, you look at the life difference. A lot of work to do. Oh, no. Does get the meter burn roll, but doesn't get the punish. Has to clash this just to not get sent full screen. Not even the damage. He doesn't want to get sent so full screen. Even though he's kind of forced to wager here and go for the clash, at least he's guaranteed some health back. So it's going to cost him all of his bar, but he has a little bit to make up for. Has a max charge canary cry, so yeah. if he's careful about how he uses it. Oh, no. The low, but the stagger into the throw. Phoenix looking a bit too strong at the moment. Oh, that was brilliant. That's like best case scenario. Get just a raw canary cry. But unfortunately, though, no meter to get the combo off it. So he got very minimal damage. Oh, no, there's a meter roll again. This is an uphill battle, but he might be able to do it. He just needs one solid hit. Oh, no. Oh, and that it. overhead is going to seal the deal as Phoenix moves on 3-1. I mean, to be fair, I, the character swap was really doing work for him. There he definitely looks a lot, I think, more comfortable than anything else. He just may be a bit more used to it. Uh, maybe Cyborg is something he wanted to to show a bit more. I mean, like you said before, that that could be a bit of a nifty matchup when it comes to the long, long range game. But So I think early on, it's calling, I mean, I know calling matchups week one, right? That's that's a bit of a risky business. You can, but get, you can get an early impression, but I maybe not like, like a final judgment. I feel like characters that, although Cyborg himself is a really good zoner, characters that can outzone him, and by mean outzoning, I mean either if they have damage to trade really favorably or fast projectiles, almost to a level of hit scan, like Harley Quinn, can do quite well against him from range. I've got dead shot can as If well. your projectiles are faster than his fireballs, yeah. right? Because that means that Especially if you can block in time as right. That, that's, that's, not that's even actually kicker. taking the that's, damage. That's the kicker, and that's actually what we saw in the first couple of games where they would fire projectiles at the same time. Cyborg would get hit by the projectile, dead shot would block. And that was kind of, that's kind of like the uh, the classic right there. But the change to Black Canary worked out really well. You can see the method in that as well, but unfortunately I think it was just a bit too late. However, we have another match to get underway. We do, it's the Pale Emperor versus DF Decoy Octopus. Let's not forget, this is Combo Breaker 2017. Early game stages in the pool play. Injustice 2, this Injustice Pro Series event. Now, one thing we can't forget about is this is pool play. Yes, so when it comes to gameplay from some of these guys, these might be some of the first games of the day these guys have played outright. We don't know how much casuals they had beforehand. We don't know how many games they played in their tournament before this point, we might not know. So. One thing to factor in is, some of your worst gameplay, or I guess where you're going to be the most nervous, is probably going to be at these first stages. Well, how many times have we heard, right, that sometimes the hardest games you'll have are in pool? That's what I think. I, that's I think my it, worst gameplay. I, I think it depends, like, how, how quick you are to kind of get warmed up on the day. Obviously, you know, you, you can sit there and play casuals for hours upon hours before your pool starts and try and get as used to it as possible. But some people kind of just go in cold, you know. They kind of just want to go in there, get their games out of the way, and play them. But uh, I kinda, it, it depends how you take to it personally. But we might actually see some Black Adam here. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, Joker a little bit more so because... Joker's like a little the, bit more niche, but yeah. Black Adam is definitely an American character as well, you know. Obviously, even back in the Injustice 1 days, Black Adam's always been a very American scene character. We've already seen a ton of him already in the early stages of this game, so not a huge surprise to see him perhaps here. 
Now, Joker in particular, it's one of those characters that everyone seemed really excited about when he got revealed because in Injustice 1, I think a big thing that held the character back in Injustice 1 uh, might have been the Injustice 1 netcode, making the Joker a little bit harder to play. Whereas now, you can practice in a much more, I guess, controlled environment when it comes to execution. And you can start really relishing and experimenting with those setups against everyone without having to worry about dropping it. Are they going to go straight in or go for a button check? No, this oh, is, this like is a real match. They're going straight in, a real match. So oh, wow, nice overhead to start things off. Drops the combo though, so a bit of an unfortunate start, but at least he managed to... No, he did, actually didn't even get the first hit. Black Adam was able to steal it away. Now, the first hit actually is why we didn't see a full combo right there. That that gas grenade does land a full combo, as you can see right there, but if he hasn't got it, his damage on that is going to be super limited. But as I say that, he's got corner positioning as well, but fighting his way out with the forward one. All right, answering back. Oh, spikes two bars for that, but actually drops it anyway. So unfortunately, a big waste of meter. That would have hurt so much. Well, as well, it's Black Adam as well, right? If Black Adam gets that kind of opener, that is going to do damage. Now, this is a trade. Now, this is a trade that Joker cannot afford to take. That low lightning just it does that knockdown chunk of damage. Ooh, very brave decision, but it worked out. I mean, I guess when you've got that little health left of your first life bar, kind of what have you got to lose, right? Especially when it's like chip damage away from lightning. So this is like completely neutral. Same part of the screen, four bars each, same health. Crazy good stuff. Good blocks. Oh, Brooks versus being a little bit hard to open up. And Murphy just gets hit by a roar down two. Spends the bar to get the launcher. Oh, oh no, he no. drops the ender. Now, unfortunately, if you're dropping the ender with Joker, he really thrives on mix-ups. And if the mix-ups come at the end of the combo, so if he's dropping it, he's losing all of it. Well, especially if you're against Black Adam, who's going to be hitting like an absolute truck every time he gets an opportunity to. Oh, interesting use of trying to go for the forward three there, because he was probably expecting the gas grenade. An element of a 50-50 almost, but it was expensive. Oh, with the string, there's that down two. Doesn't convert off it either. But we're talking about nerves, right? Port play. These are some of the first matches. These guys are dropping combos. This is probably the most likely they are to drop those. Oh, wow. Gets the meter burn. Spends another bar. Gets the additional damage. Wow. That was a really good sequence from Emperor at the end there. Because the thing is, uh, the decision to use the run into meter burn was really smart. Because in this game, it's actually got armor. Yeah. And against Black Adam, who's going to try and probably check you with that tracking lightning or... The cloud, maybe. like It's going to go straight through it in that situation. Well, the, run the running crowbar itself can be quite deceivingly hard to deal with. Because once he's run a certain distance, it becomes unblockable. So if you're not aware of what that distance is, what the Joker player is, he's just going to be throwing that out at ranges you might not expect it. And it's going to become that unblockable way sooner than you might think. Nice catch. Gets the full combo into the low. What's the mix-up? Doesn't drop it this time. Spends the bar to extend the damage as well. He's actually going straight for the, uh, the combo. Anyway. There's no setup here. We haven't seen a single chattering teeth this whole set. No, well, it hasn't seemed to matter too much. And there's another down two. Doesn't manage to convert off it just yet. But massive life lead, so I don't even think it's that important. Unless he does get opened up by a lot of those full screen options. Nice to do crouch. Really checking I mean, he, That was actually one of Black Adam's new strings, uh, the forward one. It's a really fast advancing high. So if you read it, you can actually crouch it. Yeah. At the same time, you know, you're not kind of supposed to just be throwing it out of the neutral, I suppose. It's that kind of like perfect whiff punish tool, especially against a character like Joker. Oh, there's the running crowbar! Oh, oh, three! No fear from this guy, crazy. That was rude. Oh, th there's a chattering teeth, though. We see it for the first time. Did work out, but unfortunately dropped the combo. That's going to be a free full combo right there. Now, I wonder why he went for the back three instead of just the uh, cloud. Bit of a waste of bar there, in my opinion. Potentially, but, you know, it did get the round, so even if even it's expensive, as long as it gets the life bar, still worth it to a degree, regardless. Oh, right. running out of crowbar again. Doesn't get hit by it this time, though. Put a stop to this crazy man. This is where it gets a little bit dangerous. The, op the, uh, the option to jump out is quite likely here, so you wonder if he's going to try and scout it. Not even worried, actually. Just going straight in. All right, fair dudes. Oh, wow. Staggers into the throw. Throws him out of the corner. I think if he can keep the full screen and trade well, though, that wasn't too bad. He might mean both, both players have access to super here, so I like maybe kind of going for that almost like armor attempt. Oh, it doesn't go. Actually, doesn't let him go for the wager. Goes that back three. I he could have maybe air, uh, air escaped there, air tech, potentially. Um, but I think that's probably why he was going for those like individual hits at the end, because they both had wager and they both had loads of bar. But if he lands a hit here and there and it doesn't let him, the damage is going to chip down. And that's like happy days. Oh, okay, so uh, player two, I think it's, uh, I believe, is asking to check his buttons before they actually play hardcore, just to make sure he hasn't got it wrong. Unfortunately, to be fair, it's kind of, at least he's asking this time, so kind of just like rematching and going straight for the buttons, but unfortunately you want to make sure you're kind of doing those button checks, right? Doing it in the pause menu, making sure your button config is the way it should be, then checking hey, it, and this, then going into the set. This is an Injustice 2 Pro Series event. You do not want to go out to uh, bad buttons. No, not a good way to go. Definitely. So he's just going to swap them through. But I mean, if, if we see this again, if we do see Joker versus Black Adam again, I don't think... Black 
it, it's kind of hard to call because right now Jake has been like super aggressive, but there is that kind of it appears to be a little bit unfamiliar. Yeah, I think to a degree, um, he has been blocking uh, some of the streams quite well, and then certain elements actually where we would see him try and throw out like elements 50-50 in between. Just like maximum gas. crowbar. Yeah, exactly. They're going to be running it back. Different stage now though. Scott Atlantis. Oh wow, the parry connects for the first time. Actually, speaking of parry, that used to be the way the Joker would build his trait up. You know, stack it three times, get that speed increase. We're not actually seeing uh, Pale Emperor go for much of the trait at all. I think that's the funny thing here. Though. We're pointing out certain things that Emperor isn't really using with Joker, but. Evidently, by the score count, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. Clearly, like, he's, he's doing fine without them. Oh, oh no! no that's unblockable! Gets. Somebody to tell this man it's an unblockable, unfortunately getting tagged by it again. And now spends the one bar. Misses the back three, though, but still a bit of a life lead, so might not come back to haunt him too much. Oh, he takes a lot of damage here. Oh, that's instant jump too. Wow. That, that combo drops looking pretty costly right now. Just lost himself a clear like 30, 40 percent unnecessarily. Yeah, unfortunate. He, I think even though he took the round, unfortunately, uh, it taken a lot of damage to get that because of the drop. But... Yeah, the check check that one off. I think. Again, really going back to this full screen, but it, it's weird, right? Because it's full screen and then it's immediately in there into full combos. Indeed, gets a full launch this time though. Oh, extends the damage again. That actually does add quite a deceiving amount oh. of damage if you spend it. Spends another bar. Wow. Expensive sequence for bar, but look at the life lead. Absolutely. But, you, I mean, you mentioned it was expensive. All he has to do is land one substantial hit that um, we're going to see decoy maybe try and clash. He's going to get a ton of health back, but unfortunately doesn't wager there. Oh, jumps clean over. That could be a full combo. No. Maybe he thought the orbs were up. Gets the back three this time, though. Doesn't drop it. Again, unfortunately, really dropping it, but nice jumping on the parry. But again, no hit confirmed. That could have been potentially Ooh. over. Go for the trade, spends the bar. There we go. Oh, the orb's doing so much. Oh my gosh, he's just walking in front. No fear from either way. Oh wow, and there's a clean anti air with the meteor burn lightning. Good one. That, I mean, that, that, that was important a, to win that, right? That was a huge amount of respect at the end as well. Like both players. Oh, just just that, that slight walk towards him because he was that confident. That he was, was a Mexican jump over standoff. Him. That was a Mexican standoff. Also brave, especially when you're like two games down, but Decoy Octopus looking a bit more comfortable now at the very least, but Pale Emperor getting so much damage. Nice grab again. They're going to be really important. If, he, if he's jumping in, like it's a lay into a string or grab. The second you try and take the grab, you can eat that full string every day. Oh wow, wake up with a parry. He's been quite brave on those parries, but most of the time they've worked out, so it didn't seem. It makes sense. Oh wow, but speaking of brave attempts though, he just jumps in clean with the interactable. Unfortunately, didn't get a max damage combo off it, but definitely got a little bit wow, of something more okay. than enough to just get a strong life lead and take himself into match point. But this time around, though, match point with a much more substantial health lead. That's the full catch. That's one of the new benefits, actually, for Black Adam. Is when he catches the, uh, the, the cloud, it's much easier for him to come off the meatless cloud now. Why have we jump into wow. parry? I, I kind of like how Octopus is like, he's really going to those orbs when he sees that Emperor's on lower life and kind of just needs him to be in the vicinity of them. He doesn't even need them to connect. That's been one of Black Adam's damage. That's been one of his greatest strengths in, in Justice in general, is closing out rounds. Nice. I, I like that conversion yeah, too, yeah, seeing he was in the air. Oh, there's a full whiff. That could be huge. Doesn't get a full jump in though, but shipping him down a little bit. Now this is the adaptation. He's going for the cloud instead of the uh, lightning because it trades much better because of a faster starter. Very smart. And now he only needs one more. Oh no, the drop. Oh, hang on a minute. Wait a minute. Raw jumping into super. And that worked. Did that work? I think it did. Is that going to do it? That, 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 no, that must it. do enough damage. Sure. There's no way that is going to do enough to kill. What just happened there? So, all right. So, right at the end. It was a very heartbreaking drop. We actually landed the cloud on a trade, but didn't get the lightning, which was guaranteed at the end, which would have actually won the round. And then opts to go for a meter burn lightning at the very end, right as he got a jump in. But the good knowledge to go, I've gone for a jump in. Here's a super for no clash. And that was just a crazy, crazy, crazy turn. Of I actually think the, the, the biggest heartbreaking thing about that set was the fact that his buttons were wrong the first couple of them. And then he played so much better when they were when he had his buttons the way he wanted them to be. But on the subject of Black Adam, I do believe we've got a replay to show you guys at home. And I'll have to wait and see what this is. This is going to be, I believe, a Sonic Fox throw bait, apparently. Let's see what happened. Actually, now, the thing about this is that 
we've been traveling a lot. So some of these moments I've actually not seen yet. So we'll have a look. Like, oh, wow. There there's go. that almost like basically that's like the, the injustice to shimmy, right? Put yourself in a situation that you want them to throw. So 4-3 just goes clean through it. That throw immunity. Oh, that's actually against, something. Uh, now, actually, my favorite thing about this kind of replay is Sonic Fox, right? His success in Netherrealm games kind of speaks for itself. But Mortal Kombat X, it did have a certain degree of throw immunity. There was a few things you could do about it. But an injustice, like shimmying, shimmying with four threes for just the straight up immunity to them is something that we used to do years ago and haven't done throughout the entire duration of MPX. But now the game's coming back, the players are already adjusting to that. Well, those hard read situations, I think, are going to return an injustice too. And a forward three on reads good as well because on block you're totally safe and on hits a full combo. So it's a good decision there. And it was uh, against Manny as well. So I'm sure we'll see that guy around either way throughout the course of the event. But either way, we're going to go for a quick break, guys, where we get more pulls underway. Don't go anywhere. The Injustice 2 Pro Series will continue after this. How's it going guys? Welcome back. We are live once again at Combo Breaker 2017 for the Injustice 2 Pro Series presented by PS4 and we have more of our pool play matches left to go. Indeed, about one thing I'm really looking forward to seeing particularly today is kind of character variety. Obviously these early early days tournaments in Justice 2 hasn't been out for very long, so it's a question of who can adapt to the game the quickest and kind of soak up the most knowledge, but also what characters are they using? We're already seeing a ton of dead shots, which isn't a huge surprise. Obviously Sonic Fox has been doing a lot of work with this character, and that's not a again a massive surprise either, as Rank Match sort of leader sort of speaks for itself. He finally got a loss the other day. You know, uh, I, I, was, I saw, I saw. It was saw. to a cat woman, I believe. Now, this match we have upcoming is Superbomb versus Devastator MK. 
Dark side versus Deadshot, so no doubt we're going to see another zoning matchup. But now, this is a matchup that I've heard a lot of kind of wow. debate over, and a big sort of fact here seems to be that Dark Side's Omega Beams knocking down is apparently quite a deal breaker. But at the same time, he doesn't quite have the speed of Deadshot's projectiles, but at the same time, just as I can say that, just look at the combos coming out with Deadshot MK. Massive damage coming out already. And I think another element right here is, wow, look at how many boom tube mix-ups we're seeing already. Very bold stuff. Into their jump. Now, the, really, the reason that's very effective is because uh, the stomp is a low. Jump-ins are overhead, so that's very difficult that to That instant with. jumping low attack, which just kind of throws the, like, it, it throws the rules of jumping attacks in other games out of the window. It's just instant jump low. There's only so many you can be. Wow, wastes two bars and still gets hit from the air tech. It's always terrible, I think, when you air tech and you get hit by the combo anyway. Oh no, it doesn't go into the, uh, the cartwheel. That would have been a full combo. Oh well, tags the minion. Oh, hits the overhead chop. Has it got the bar to extend this? No, not quite enough. Only just built it. But look at the life lead already coming out from Devastator. But Devastator can actually afford to sit back in zone now. And normally it would be, do you play that zone in battle? It's quite risky, but here, he's got so much life to work with. He'll trade for days. He doesn't care. Nice. Oh, wow. That was a really good prediction. Laser there coming out from Devastator. Looking super comfortable here. So I think there's a couple of things going on in this matchup. So a big one, I think, is uh, mobility and the ability to get in. So Deadshot. Pretty much, you know, although he's got some good up-close tools, keep away is definitely like what this character's been designed to do. But if you're dark side and you're playing well with those trait mix-ups into Boom Tube to really sort of secure that way in, Deadshot kind of has to hold that sometimes. Well, to be honest, that, that's actually quite a, a deal breaker for fighting Deadshot in general if you've got a teleport. Because the recovery, like, the rifle shot is so good, right? There's a ton of damage, ton of chip damage, but it does have a slow startup. So if you just happen to teleport at the same time as he goes for that rifle, you'll probably get a full combo for it. So it actually means that he's got to be a little bit more careful than he might normally be at that range. But already looking a little bit more comfortable for Super Mum. Getting opened up by a lot less of these jump-ins now, actually. He looks a little bit more ready for the teleport, too. I mean, it's a very overwhelming playstyle, right? So the game number one, if you're going to just go in, go ham, go in with those teleports and mix for days, like, it's going to be kind of hard to deal with. Oh, wow. Nice Speaking of mix for days, you see that overhead minion into the instant low of the jump-in, too. Wow. That was a nice little conversion as well. Take a little bit of damage. That's going to be meat burned into a full combo, no doubt. Here we go. How much damage? Oh, air tech. So we're not going to see a full combo. Still, and he can keep himself in. But it's beneficial at times. He actually air tech in the correct direction, so the combo did actually drop. Taking damage, that little minion's going to disappear, but it doesn't matter. Really good catch there. And Devastator once again up on a round. I can kind of already see these Omega Beams doing a, a, a lot of work just to stop Deadshot from just constantly firing what he wants. But quite a classic in another game. Too. If your projectile knocks down, you can see right there. If your projectile causes a knockdown, it's a very beneficial trading tool as well as damage. Because right as they're standing up, you're still on the ground. You can still move. So in a zoning war, if you trade, it is instantly in your favor because of the knockdown. This round could be quite interesting to play, though. Even though Superman does have quite a, a bit of a life deficit, look at all that bar he's got. Oh no, there's the interactable. But as each individual hit goes down, uh, that's it's probably going to work, but a massive waste of bar. Ah, sure. but no, the quick time event. Are we going to see the improved damage here? I don't think he's got it yet. Remember, if you, if you press your heavy attack button during the super attack as hits connect, you can actually make your super move do slightly more or less damage if you're on like, the defending side. But of course, you didn't see it there. Now, actually, if you think about it, he's done a huge amount of damage with that super. Tries to anti but unfortunately, Deadshot stubbing their arms isn't going to do the job. And that's going to be a second game for Devastator. Now, you can see two, why he tried to anti there. 2 0, but looking so much more comfortable in that second match. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> But it still looked very good, you know, very, very comfortable. And the one thing we can take away from the set right now is Devastate looks very comfortable in the matchup. Yeah, for sure. Which well, isn't a huge surprise to see. I mean, like, like we said before, so many people are coming into this tournament with either just straight up maining Deadshot or a pocket Deadshot, right? So you kind of have to make sure you're aware of the basics of how to deal with that kind of character. But we might actually be seeing a character change coming out from Superman. So, Aquaman, again, very popular, but I say we might see it, might not always we'll see it. Maybe another black he's, hover he's hovering over Aquaman a lot. I think he's thinking about it. Maybe it's a coincidence. <laughs> Maybe that's just his favorite one to look at on the character screen. The flash. Ah, the Flash, he's completely different. Absolutely. So this is going to be much more of a uh, different matchup. Flash is going to have to get in here. Yeah. It's not going to be the zoning battle that we saw before. However, on the flip side, I reckon we might see Devastator actually switch up. And instead of using the boom tubes to go in, using the trait to pose in space and to enforce mix, we might actually see Devastator play a much more defensive game here because he knows his opponent has to pose in space. Oh. We're about to find out how he's going to play. It goes straight for the jump in. Oh. 
Disrespect to the down one after the block. Superbomb getting the first hit though does mean that Devastator stomps aren't going to be a full combo just yet. Has to get hit a couple more times before that's an option. Oh wow! Oh, okay. he did not expect him to flip over that way. I don't think anyone did. Look how much bar that Superbomb's built already. Almost four in the blink of an eye. But all that bar but isn't getting a lot of damage just yet. The push block coming out from Devastator. Full screen too. That's probably going to connect. No, I thought it was going to punish the minion activation for sure, but it, it didn't. It recovered just in time. Some really good blocks though from Superman. Hasn't been opened up too much just yet, but again, look at the life difference. Devastator is totally happy taking these hits here. The problem there. is because he just wasted all four bars. He's got nothing to extend these damage to get the launchers. Oh yeah, that is true actually. If he lands the down one too, what's he going to get off it? Basically nothing. Oh, tries to confirm the air to air, but the wake up straight Omega Beam is going to take Devastator to match point already. We're going to take this one 3 0 by those things. That's, that, that super missing was the kind of thing that you just kind of, you need to shake that off immediately. You cannot be dwelling on that for the rest of the match. Another combo drop actually trying to punish that knee this time. Doesn't quite get it. Oh, let's jump in again. Oh, would that be quite enough? Little down one's going to take it. Superbomb kind of desperately needed that life bar before he lost the Devastator has really. what we like to call the luggage advantage. Oh. Oh wow, wake up C. I mean, that, that is one of the strengths. And another super, I mean, I think it's probably going to work, but again, in the previous match, the super made sense, because at least, even though it did a chunk of damage, well, this might at least maybe even things up. It does do quite a lot by itself. Yeah, but last time, uh, at least he had the full screen to zone with. The Flash is still going to have to get in, and now he's got no bar to do anything substantial. That could have been a full combo, but he had no bar to execute. I'm about to say, one as well. I was actually about to mention, like, when you go in for the Clash here, you go for the Wager, if you do spend all of your bar to just get some damage and they've still got a lot left to take, they just guaranteed the health back. So ultimately, your super, if you really think about it, you didn't really do as much as you might have thought. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that really is what it comes down to. If you super and then get hit and clash, I mean, there's a, a, a trade of resources. But he does have a bar to extend this. If he doesn't drop this. Oh, no, oh. no, that could be costly. Oh, the read on the running man starts. Back to back. Back to back. Wow. The jump in. He gets it, but no, not quite. The down two. That was almost so close. Too close for comfort, no doubt. Wow. I, I'm i not going to lie. I thought Superman was going to choke. I was, was, was in the process of choking it at the end. There. It came down to like three basically executing back to back. That was a scramble. That was but he, a but scramble. he was able to salvage those scrambles with something that ended up winning the round. And that has taken him to 2-1 now. Actually has a game on the board. Now a game like that will either wake you up and you start playing better in the next few games, or it's going to be hard to take the next one and never say it's just going to you know, completely keep it together. Uh, trying to challenge it, the meter burn version of that knee is much, much, much safer. Oh, Minion just completely vanished. Gets a full combo this time. Oh, spends two back to back. Unfortunately, drops it again. But at the same time, he actually has himself a life lead now for the, well, what could be the first time in the set. Nice little punish on that knee as well. Nothing hugely substantial. But again, a really good read. And this time with the meter to make it count. And there's that meter burn forward three. He just plows straight through whatever it was Supermom tried to do there. Give him a free minion activation. Good box though for Superman. Wow! Really cool. Flash, Flash is straight I mean, through it. Almost like in typical Flash style, completely uh, threading the needle on that <laughs> Omega Beam. Crazy good stuff. Match point again though for Devastator, but much closer. He's got barely closer. any life left though. Even Chip at this point is going to do it. But he just has to try and do as much damage as he can before he inevitably loses that life bar. He's doing a really good job of it so far though. I mean, just by itself, almost 50% of his second life bar gone, just like that. Any damage he did there was free damage. You know, that's going to be consolation damage going into that almost guaranteed next round situation. Another wake up. Superman doesn't really seem to have any grounded answers to that wake attack yet. Actually, Super is going to connect it now, but in the same situation as last time, this is going to do a chunk. But Devastate is in a position that he has a wager, and he's going to have a meter advantage here now because he's just spent all of his bar on the super move. And so if he gets hit by anything, free life back. Oh, hang on. Oh, Speaking no. of which, actually on the flip side, he landed a full combo, and now on the flip side of that, Supermum doesn't have bar to clash. Oh, that full screen and the on the track activation. Really smart stuff from Supermum, but Devastator's going to get rid of his wager now. Can he get guaranteed life back? No, even on bar. I think they've spent one bar, but this situation is very advantageous to Devastator. Oh, because he's got the full screen just like that. He was able to get that read on the jump heavy into Stomp once again. Ouch! That's game over. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, meter burn and Mega Beam in the air just covering up too much of the screen. And then uh, is going to be able to get through at that time. But Devastator is going to move forward, looking super comfortable. 
I, I quite like the character swap. I am actually a fan of how we're already seeing that. Like, let's not forget the tournament standard being three out of five. Basically, means you have more room to you have more room to experiment with character swaps. If you have backups, if you have some like pocket and secondary characters, because you're not locked down to two out of three, you actually have those games to work with. You might say, be a little bit less restricted in going for those characters. To but I, I want to say that's actually why I really like the three out of five rule because it does give players that extra time. It's breathing room. Yeah, it's breathing it's, room. It's time to think about it. You know, a two out of three setting is that truly enough time to go? Maybe my character wasn't working out. You know, unless it's like a three round stomp fest. There's no real way to know whether it was a character. Do you say stomp fest issue? because it was just dark side and that's every, that was actually every, every no jump is like stomp. But now, now you pointed it out. You stomp the yard three games in a row. But either way, three out of five is just so beneficial for these guys to make those decisions and, and think about it more. I think especially know. when it's like early tournaments, right? Oh, yeah. Injustice two hasn't been out for a tremendous amount of time. These guys have uh, they're putting as much time as they can, no doubt. You know, they're paying for a huge amount of money today, and that those oh, yeah. are all important ranking points as well. But. Uh, at the end of the day, it's all about how quickly you can adjust to that. But moving into our next game, we're going to have Big Marcus facing off against Royale. This is going to be Pool F4. Royale, a face we've been seeing around for a while in the NRS scene. I mean, just another one of those long-term NRS players, you know. Um, lots of different majors around. Um, I believe, actually, Combat Houston, Royale, if memory serves me correct. But if I'm wrong, I'm sure someone will tweet me with an immediate cor correction. But either way, you know, that's one of the good things about Combat Breaker is seeing a lot of these... Um, old school NRS players that have been around for a while, especially throughout, you know, Mortal Kombat X, those guys that support it for basically the two years straight, going to as many majors as possible. And here they are, you know, this is the first major and everyone is here. Why do you think Combo Break is kind of ticking a lot of boxes in terms of like entrance, right? We've got NetherRealm OGs, NetherRealm newcomers, people that their first game was MKX and were successful, people that their first game was Injustice, and so maybe they didn't play MKX and they're waiting for this one. We've got players from other games giving Injustice a try, you know, it's kind of, it really is bringing a lot of the FGC in like playing it now, especially in the days. Looks like having a pad malfunction on stage, guys. No, it's, so uh, I believe one of the players forgot to DC their pads, so they're kind Classic. of just, they're, they're dealing with that as and when, as we do. So I actually don't know what character Royale plays in this game. That's no, a big thing either. about. I've, I've actually not seen him play yet. A big thing about Injustice 2 is we we know what all these guys played back in previous games and even in the previous Injustice. But in Injustice 2, it's a complete you know. It's IRL a free for all, man. I mean, how how many like hardcore character loyalists of characters that have actually come back have swapped to other characters, right? KDZ playing Aquaman. Everyone's like, what? What's up with that? You know, you you, you associate someone. You associate someone with the character so much, but then in Injustice 2, with the fact that the characters are a bit different in Injustice 2, or have been given some new additions that make them better or worse, depending on how I've I'll tell you what it. I want to see today, at some point, or over the weekend as a whole, Swamp Thing. Oh yeah. Swamp oh, Thing yeah. is going to be like the hyped pit. Because Swamp Thing is in a bit of a, as always, early days, in a bit of a, is a, bit of a precarious situation in kind of like community opinion. Some people think he's really bad, some people think he's got a lot of potential. But when you play him, he's kind of, he really controls that ground game. He's got that space. I think that that is a trait that some certain players can put to good use. I know there's a certain uh, decay that would agree with you right oh, of there. Of course. Now, I know you totally didn't steal all of his tech when you played Swamp Thing. Hey, man, if you think I innovated anything with Swamp Thing, you're wrong. <laughs> you are <laughs> horrendously <laughs> you're mistaken. mistaken. But I actually do believe we might be good to go into this game since it's going to be Big Marcus versus Royale. I'm assuming they'll uh, once again check their buttons here. I'm seeing another dead shot. We might see, uh, this might be a bit of a running theme throughout this tournament, a very, very popular character. But I mean, to be fair, like, even today alone, it's not like we're seeing Deadshot just get picked up and automatically just stomp the win. Yeah. Like, obviously, Sonic Fox is playing Deadshot as one of his many characters at the moment, not a huge surprise, but at the same time, that doesn't necessarily mean that Deadshot is an automatic win. You do have to put the work in, you do have to play smart. But actually, on that subject, we're not going to see a Deadshot at all right now, we're going to see Brainiac versus Atrocitus. I am so happy to see some Brainiac. This character is so fun to watch. Now, for those that may wonder, now Atrocitus, we're sort Look at of that crown as well, that sick hat. Now, actually, we've wasted no time. These guys have gone straight in. So, with this Brainiac pick, um, Brainiac can get zoned out by certain characters. And that was a really nice catch, by the way, as well. Nice catch from down one. But Brainiac's mobility is what makes him a real threat. But speaking of threatening, hit confirms into the meter burn Blood Nado. That's going to be a staple thing, I have no doubt. But one thing I can see being a big changer here is those little minions, those drones that Brainiac shoots out as his character power. If Brainiac gets hit or blocks anything while it's flying out, it will disappear, including that Dexstar orb. So if Atrocitus has his character power activated, that orb is just going to shut down those drones to Brainiac completely. That's actually one of his, uh, I think, one of his biggest struggles here. I mean, bear in mind, Brainiac has got access to a wake-up attack, that backboard three chance, fantastic. Meter burn dive kick I was just about to mention is an amazing jumping tool. It's relatively safe on block in minus eight. 
nice amount of pushback and a full combo on here. Good wake up from Big Marcus though, just trying to chip away this last little bit of life. Oh, Holds onto the drone, the Big sandwich. Marcus in air. Now the dive kick, the one thing about the dive kick with Brainiac is, it's not a traditional high priority NRS dive kick that you would normally be used to. You can anti-air the dive kick just as easily as it's jumping normally. But at the same time, him, that's it. if he dive kicks at a height you might not expect it, it is going to catch you at the last minute. At the same time, Real getting that nice hit confirm Atrocitus, real powerhouse character coming through. Just the sheer amount of damage he outputs. He's just stressful to fight, but at the same time, Brainiac just spends a lot of time in the air where Blood Dado is not really going to hit him. This is going to bring him down to the ground, and he's gotten cornered. There's the yeah, patience. Actually tried to read the wake up uh, straight charge, but unfortunately because he wasn't successful, losing a bar of meter. But again, the bar difference, really not that bad for either player. We might see a clash in it. The wake up Bagdash is going to hit, but yeah, it, by the end of this clash, Dexstar is going to disappear. So he's going to have a little bit more pressure from full screen. Well, the second Dexstar disappears, that's when Brainiac's able to go in. We're probably going to see access to straight. Yeah, trying to cover his base. The trait, not only a projectile, but a nice way to cover that ground and help your advance. Oh, especially if you're like flying in from the sky and you've just got this drone like right that. now. Spends a bar <laughs> of the dive kick. Oh, wow. no, no, could not watch his feet at all. He hasn't got access to wager anymore. Guaranteed trait. Now, this is a very scary situation, especially if he's going for the shield out and just anticipates the jump in. Oh, no, oh, hang on. on. Unclashable. Not quite. Wait, hang on. No clash. Oh, but uh, I should think he waited way too long before clashing because now he can spend two bars to guarantee no life back. And he's just used Dexter. He's not going to have access to Dexter yet. Wait, Marcus actually only spent one. He saved it. Maybe for a meter burn dive kick. Maybe. Oh, he goes the side. Oh, no, he no. got the back three. That is heartbreaking stuff. Oh. And the punch flow is going to take the first game. That was big Marcus's game to win. There was so much genius behind that decision. It was save a bar. Use it on meter burn dive kick. I've got trait. I'm going to use the trait to cover my advance. I'm going to cross up with meter burn dive kick. It works out. But the drop at the last minute. That's. Oh, unfortunate, but I mean, actually, no, he's not letting it tilt him. Goes straight in with that clean anti air right at the start. Getting him that first bar, huge to take that away from a trust. I actually really like the fact that Marcus is not doing meet event dive kick every time. Um, because if you're expecting a regular version, you try and punish, and then he meter burns, he's going to catch you with that every single time. Full combo coming out from Royale, though. I really like to use that deck star orb, though, just to force him blocking after the restand. What if that was a down two breath attempt that just didn't work out? That is uh, some of the, you know, process tech that some of the guys are starting to find is the ability to get that combo damage with the, uh, the napalm breath. Oh wow, that raw blood nade, I'm not sure if that was an input error. Could have been a full combo rather than a grab though. I think I just wanted the corner positioning. Yeah, corner, is, corner is good enough as is. Oh, nice catch! Full combo once again. That was really smart as well. Yeah, like he, he instantly reacted to the fact that Royale pressed the button there and the dive kick was going to combo. This is, I've got to say, this is actually some very, very tidy Brainiac play that we're seeing. Obviously, you know, good Atrocitus as well, but it's nice that we can see Big Marcus is very knowledgeable of how to utilize the charged drone. Really important tool for this character. Challenges the, the plus frames of the punch float. No it's punish on the lift. Again, could have been a full combo, but a down one punish might not be good enough. Oh, but gets to be a bend dive kick here, so he gets a chance to open up some damage. Cashing out, you can spend the bar to get a nice chunk on the end. Very deceiving. And again, the late punish, that's why. These meter burn dive kicks are completely throwing off Royale. Completely. Oh, misses the blood nado. This will be a full combo. Maybe he's expecting a wager there. I think he was. I think he was definitely expecting it. Doesn't get the back three a little bit too high up in the air. And wow, walking into it. Not much he could have done there. That was actually really clean play from Big Marcus, though, all around. I mean, Brainiac is quite a tricky character, and at the same time, you have to approach him in a very specific way. I want to point uh, out, actually, Brainiac. Big Marcus playing on stick is, I think, one of the reasons Brainiac is a really good pick for him. Um, when you play Brainiac on a pad, you kind of have to uh, rebind your buttons to accommodate your trait as a different button other Super than circle or B. And the reason that is, is by holding down your trait, your character power button, you can kind of delay when the drone comes out. So you can you know, get meatless launches from certain strings, or you can use it for pressure. Doing that on a stick, where you're kind of just traditionally holding down a button, is, like you said, it's a good idea. It really gives you a bit more utility with that trait. Once again, oh, nice block on the cross-up. Very well blocked by Royale right there. Quite a dirty mix-up. Now, the problem I can see with this, Superman's 4-2-3. Brainiac doesn't have a lot of answers for it from what we've seen so far. Though that one matchup, to, like, that, that one thing by itself, could be quite a big deciding factor. Well, a lot of Brainiac's potential answers are quite slow, you know, and that 4-2-3 is so fast. Also, 4-2-3 is going to punish everything that can be punished without fail. Full combo. Here we go. Again, Royale looking a lot more comfortable with the Superman pick, I think. Hang oh, on. Wow. And yeah. Or air to air, more like. 
These cross-up blocks have been very, very tidy for Morale. I wonder if we're going to start seeing Brainiac um, or Marcus go for the close version, perhaps. Bagdash is getting caught by the eye laser. At least it's going to waste the rest of the trade, so he has got to wait for that to come back. Start playing that whole range game. Oh, wow, good anticipation. Anticipating jumping. I, but this is another one of those elements. Um, you can actually zone Brainiac. I'm not necessarily sure with Zootman because just the natural angle of his projectiles, but if you have good air projectiles, it's quite easy to keep the jet out of the air. That's actually really good spacing there for Big Marcus, putting himself just outside of the range of 4 2. Oh. Wow, tricky stuff. Big Marcus all over the place. He's going to get a nice knockdown there. That should guarantee a trait. Yep. Again, holding it, really trying to cover that advance. The back one pressure as well. These mids are fantastic. Oh my god! Surprise Red overhead! Dude, Big Marcus' pressure has been absolutely incredible so far. It's been very unpredictable. It's been very, very unpredictable. It's been, you've not been sure whether he's going to go for the cross-up hover, whether he's going to go for a regular trait, whether it's a raw cross-up. Nice! Good air to air as well. The trait combined with the dive kick just for the extra damage. Now this is where Royale has a chance. He's closed in space. He's got trait. Another dive kick. Oh. Very close. He has to be very careful, but hang on! It connects right at the last minute, so it does actually make it not connect. Uh oh. Oh, he was waiting for Was that a clean punish? I as soon as he saw the, the air laser, he went straight in for that. What do you call it? The swing, no? It, it the, the tendril swing. I, I actually think it's the official name, I think, is tendril swing, but it was either like, it was so fast. It was either an incredibly fast reaction, or the second he saw the jump, he was just ready for you know, the air laser. We've gone back to the process. Yeah, either way, I think I understand. It. Either way, I understand the decision. I think. To be fair, though, Big Marcus had some really unique answers to certain things from Superman that I'd not seen before. It's really cool to see that kind of knowledge coming into play already. A big thing right here is that um, Royale seems a little bit timid to add here. here. Where he's actually seeing the jump and he's, he's not actually attempting an anti-air at all, but he's kind of giving him that free pressure. Nice oh, there's block. a block on the 50-50, a full combo punish this time. No, he drops it! Maybe he kind of just instinctively thought he had the trait held down. Maybe, or it might have been a, a unique combo event, uh, perhaps. There we go. The uh, full screen blood lift actually I think it worked really well in this matchup. It, it is going to stop Brainiac on block or hit from establishing those drones. Bear in mind, again, if he blocks, it disappears. Good out yeah, nice swing. cow! In range for the back three as well. I'm not quite sure. Maybe he's just trying to keep the mid screen, but it didn't quite work out. But he has got a life feed, so Royale looking a lot more stable now. Nice, nice catch of that meter band dive as well. Really reading that jump back. We're punished full combo. Here comes Royale. Oh, good air escape to get away from that guaranteed damage. But because of it, had no bar for the meter band dive kick. Making himself safe with Dexstar, the classic. Does spend his bar on the meter burn though, and again, another air escape. A very expensive round. That's actually something we've been seeing quite a lot from Brainiac players though. It's kind of that, that instant jump back dive kick to catch a poke or to, to catch a quick button on the ground. But it's always done from point blank. Oh, punch float, meter burn, yes he does. Very intelligent right there, going for the meter burn, get those plus frames, take the down one, take the free chip. Not a lot of health left to work with. Wow, that's going to do not quite enough, though. There is a chunky hitbox on that. A very chunky hitbox on that. However, though, this is actually match point for Big Marcus. If he can keep um, Royale in the corner here. Great. Clean anti air, no, that brave weak attack. Oh, he's got Dexter out, though. That was very beneficial. Wow, actually. didn't we catch him. Time. Oh, Dexter, the ultimate block air support. Is he dedicating? No. Now that was good awareness, knowing he didn't have Dexter, didn't want to overcommit, kept it safer with the blood of hell. There's good. that answer to meter burn dive kick, that down one into special, turning the down one into a full combo starter. Oh, catch him jumming out of the corner. I actually think down one will punish regardless, keep it unclashable, take the plus frames, the grab, it's not going to quite do it, but this is a terrible situation to be in now. Oh, wow, that entire sequence was crucial from Royale, because not only is he tied up the set, He's found some answers to stuff that's been giving him problems the entire set so far. And again, goes in for the down one. I don't think that's going to deter him. The whiff right there, he's probably going to try and down one punish consistently. That is the most consistent punish he's had so far. And oh, yeah, Dexter. Oh, no. You can say he went for the conversion again, but unfortunately a little bit too late. Oh, but not this time. I think actually the, the adaptation to just the straight up neutral that Marcus has is really good for Royale. And again, that is actually punishable technically, so I reckon we'll see it again a couple of times. Oh, gets over Punch Float. Doesn't quite have the bar, though, to extend the damage of the dive kick. He's trying to go for the shimmy in the back, too. No one home. 
But yeah, that is something about Brainiac. He does need bar to get a lot of bang for his buck when he makes those hard reads and how to open you up. Well, I, I, a large amount of um, Marcus's damage has come from Peter Van Dive Kick. We've seen almost none of them connect at this point. I think it's just a lot of patience from Royale. Lots of patience. Yeah, this full screen, I mean, you can tell Royale is totally comfortable. We hit the air, Punch Walk. That's another solution. There, yeah, indeed. Put himself in a really good position. Wow, wow that's still connected from that high up. Kind Match of surprised to, to see that one, to be honest. But either way, works out. I think he's either been saving that for this last game, or he's now twigged on that. Hang on a minute, this is an answer. If he leaves the ground, I air punch float. He's, kind of, he's jumping at ranges that Big Marcus has been jumping for those floats. No confirm, doesn't get the down one lift. Actually, Marcus left with a lot more life, but the 50-50 comes out. Oh, corner repositioning as well. Good awareness from Royale. Now he has him exactly where he wants him. There's the straight. Here comes the advance. No, no block on the cross-up, but he kept it safe. I think he was not so confident it was going to get hit. There you go. There's the block on the float. Or the lift. Goes in oh, no. Runs straight into this one. Very crucial air tech right there. Saving that damage. But this is very dangerous. Oh, no. Active frames on the blood lift. Hello. This is going to be hard for Big Marcus. Massively down on health. Massively down on meter. And his character power is out. Dexstar is there. Oh. Slap. Oh, wow. Now this is going to be a tough comeback. Look at the bar versus Marcus's zero bar. Uh-oh. That's not a good start. Oh, is that going to connect? No. Oh, he must have thought it was going to chip him out. Must Hang on. Going to chip him out. He's got a hit. What's the mix-up? Oh, Wait a wow. minute. Wake up, Bloodlift. What's going on? Oh, no. Nah, oh, yeah. Dexter again. That final denial of any momentum coming back out. That, that could have been, 2v1, that could have been an unbelievable comeback. An un I mean, cause, so, the second we saw the super not work out, that's like, right, if he's going to build bar to clash through taking damage, that's going to be like right at the very end. To be honest though, supers and Injustice 2 do a ton of chip Yeah, they do. Like, they way do. more than we're used to seeing in other own games. So the fact that we're seeing them use that, u that utility where, you know, seemingly random super there, mashed out of block stun, but it, it left him with like pixels of life left. But this is a replay of a match we saw earlier before, I believe. This would have been, yeah, Joker between Black Adam. Jamal yeah, we saw this earlier, thro early, earlier throughout the day, actually. Um, I think it was a mixture of Decoy Octopus right there. Um, now, this kind of matchup is complete key point. But what we saw there was we saw the Cloud, which guarantees the Lightning Bolt. Um, but it was, I think, a brave decision from Emperor to still go, well, at the end of the day, if we both have one hit left, my projectile is much faster than yours. If I hit mine, you're dead. But that, that's over. a really interesting thing about these kind of like projectile wars in Injustice because some of them are like instant projectiles, like you do them, they connect instantly, like gunshots or, for example, like you know, the revolver shots or Harleys. But then you've got like the fireballs or the ones with the longer startup. So it's kind of about how you manage that, whether they're in the air, whether they're on the ground. So it kind of, it's an interesting dynamic. But on that note, we are going to go to another quick break, guys, but don't go anywhere because after this short break, Combo Breaker 2017 will continue.
How's it going, guys? Welcome back. This is the Injustice 2 Pro Series presented by PS4 live at Combo Breaker 2017. We have more pool games to go through, but this time around, we've actually got some juicy ones. Biohazard is up next, and we're going to see some more Bane on deck. Now, this is going to be quite, I think, interesting because Biohazard had a really good showing at Toriyukun. He's, he's fresh off yes. a good tournament place. So he's definitely ready for the game, but I think the best thing about Biohazard going into Injustice 2 is his character variety. He has access to this, like, solid as a rock Bane, but he has pulled out Harley last week, which almost, almost won him the tournament. He's now up against Phoenix, who we saw earlier today with a really strong showing with Deadshot, but the question is, can he get Bane off him, or is he just going to get absolutely mauled? Speaking of which, off to a fantastic start, but this really is classic Bane, and I think the meaty body press probably on a read of the uh, wake up meme. Tries to air tech out, but the tries to catch him anyway. Goes to the tick throw, massive damage, even though he's on level one debuff, didn't matter. And the elbow drop to finish things off. Wow, that was a Bane round through and through. But I think if there are players out there that have loads of Deadshot experience with, with good players that play this character already, I think Firehazard is going to be one of those. And he's so comfortable with Bane because he has a legacy of experience with this character. And there's just that raw Bane bomb in the neutral. I mean, it's armored, it's so hard to deal with. Goes in, max level Venom has passed the spend. Oh my Ooh. god, how Ooh. much damage! 774, just like that. And that was all unclashable as well. As soon as he got that background bounce, that forward three follow up, all unclashable. Absolutely disgusting stuff coming out of CR's biohazard for game oh. one. Ouch, Venom. Oh. Venom. That was such a good game one. Very comfortable. I think comfortable. you have to be so careful Bane. how you manage your your meter against Bane. If you push blocks too much, if you go for air escapes where you can't do them, you will just your health will disappear. And Bane is already hard enough to wager against because you can't wager Bane bomb. Uh, just it's just done normally by itself. Uh, he's just gonna hit you with one-off hits, and they're gonna just chunk you down over and over and over again. But the thing I find in, uh, unique about this matchup is Deadshot needs to spend his meter to keep the opponent away effectively. But if you're too greedy um, or expensive, I guess, with your bar, that's when you struggle against Bane. So it's going to be weird. If he wants to zone effectively, he's got to spend those resources. If he's spending those resources, Speaking he's just going to get his spends back a bar busted. just to get the corner repositioning as well, so he keeps him cornered and just like that, adding up all this damage, spends on the bar to extend RKO. it. Now, not only is that finished off the round, it's also using up all this debuff time. That's the big deal, you know. There are all these little hidden intricacies when it comes to managing the Venom debuff time for Bane, and I mean, Biohazard, he's going to know how to do that. However, again, still trying to keep those blue bullets. If he lands a hit, he's going to send him full screen. But I think that because we're not really seeing many projectiles connect, it really isn't working out too good. Wow, he had that body splash super high up in the air as well. Phoenix just looks really uncomfortable. Two bars, not bad at all. He's going to get full health, but very dangerous. Oh, nice wake good up. wake up. Actually opting to go in, I think he wants to try and take some damage, but the wake up straight into the armor once again. I mean, classic Bane, really. Oh, the Bane bomb back to back. That's the danger when he's got the Venom and everyone he does is armored. How much can you do? He has a full corner combo. No, he drops it. That could be disastrous. Unfortunately, a combo drop like that, leaving that much damage on the table when you've got that much life to make up for. Not a good look, unfortunately. No tick grab, trying to challenge it with the down one. Oh, there's the wake up need just to get out of there. But he's got there, oh. it is the armor. If you're doing things that hit a single time, that is just gonna plow straight through. Reading the jump in, now again, really checking those down ones because he's on debuff. The grab's probably gonna kill because of it. No, maybe not quite enough. Ooh. Maybe just not enough. That was a very expensive way to end the round though. But look at all the space he's got behind him. If he can keep Firehazard away, that's his best opportunity. But Firehazard is just doing such a good job of just not letting him do that. But he's going in. Hang on. Oh, oh no. no. Stomp, that's it, game over. Wrap it up. Second game. Oh, the crowd boos. The crowd want to see the rest of the animation. I, I agree. I want to see that as well. I oh, dear. Well. But no, I mean, let's, let's not forget, you know, the, the crowd wants to watch it and all that. But at the same time, they are playing for a lot of money. So they just want to keep in that zone. He doesn't want to waste any time. Go straight into the character swap. Go to Atrocitus. Now, Atrocitus versus Bane. What do we think? I reckon the reason we've seen this matchup change is for this reason. Now, first of all, that went straight through the grab. I actually wasn't sure that was even possible. Um, on, on the flip side of that, I think he wants to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He wants to compete up close. He doesn't want to zone. He wants to fight up close and personal. Also, when you go on stages that you can cancel into the background, oh, when, you, when you cancel into those environment bounces, right, you can knock them into the ground, uh, into the background. It adds that extra layer of an attack, right? When you're waiting for a tick grab, you try and jump out and you get opened up by that. So hard to deal with. But speaking of which, this relentless rushdown coming out of Biohazard with the swift match point already. Manages the debuff, already has access to Venom again. 
But I think one uh, major thing actually we haven't really seen from Phoenix is uh, delayed wake up. Oh yeah, of course. Delayed wake up is in some ways like the golden answer to Bane. But right now actually, because he's getting up at a set time every time, it really is that mix up between grab or meaty. Wow! Up the cut doesn't matter. And what a dominating final game for Biohazard. That's actually one thing that Biohazard specifically does really well that must make him so stressful to fight is his, his unclashable game, his unwagerable game. When he's going for those attacks, those four threes, those back threes, that you cannot wager. You cannot clash them. So if he's, if he's but if he's got venom, if he's venomed up, and he's meter burning them to do even more damage, your health just disappears completely before you've even registered what damage has been lost. You're now down 60% life. Now, we mentioned it very, very briefly at the end of that match, but it really did come down to to fight Bane and Injustice 2. Delayed wake up is is such an important tool. It's it really something is. that you need to at least throw out a couple of times, I think. In, in these longer sets of three out of five, you've got those games to work with. You need to do it at some point, I think, just to show the Bane player that you're not just going to have your one OP timing. I'm going to be doing delay wake up. I'm going to be waking up here. I'm going to be waking up with jump or backdash. You have to make sure that because when, when he's venomed up, the last thing you can really do is sit there and block on every wake up. Because if he's venomed up. That's what he wants you to do, because he wants to grab. He wants to go in for those armored attacks. Well, he wants to mile through anything you do. If he commits to certain options and you delay wake up, you can actually punish him on standing too. Of course, we have another match provided what he goes for. But the next match is going to be a juicy one. We've got Awesomeo versus Foxy Grandpa. So our first UK player clashing today versus Awesomeo, who has, again, another long time play. Obviously, repping the EGP shirt. Shout outs to West Coast. But definitely a, uh, a long time fan of Netherrealm Games. These guys, I actually believe. Uh, well, have, they ever, have they ever fought in tournament before? Oh, you know, memory actually fails me. Um, I don't think they actually have. Foxy's very versed in, uh, very well versed in a lot of North American competition. I mean, you know, let's not forget this guy was really, he was for a very long time, like among that top three of Mortal Kombat X players but that's in the where, world. That's where I think this is going to be an interesting dynamic because Foxy Grandpa, like, you cannot argue with his results in Mortal Kombat X. Like, the last two years of MKX was his kind of like absolute breakout game. He's always been a fundamentally really solid player in all Netherrealm games, but MKX was kind of his real breakout performance. In Justice 1, he was never quite as successful in, so it's interesting to see how he could approach Injustice 2, considering he was never really known for success in the first. But then you take on the flip side someone like Orsimo, where SoCal had a lot of talented Injustice players. Oh yeah, SoCal was very good at Injustice 1. So Catwoman is the character Foxy's been using. Um, he's been sort of really looking among those, a character pool of potentials, and he's for now settled on Catwoman. I think right now it feels like she really plays the game he wants to play. Um, truly, actually, I can't really talk about his Catwoman too much because I've seen very little, and he hasn't been showing it too much. Foxy he's been has really very it. much just been keeping his head down and just learning the game, playing the game, and doing what he can. Now that back three, I mean, it's that is probably, I think, one of, if not the best back three in the game. Oh wow, wow. straight up with the wake up attack. Yeah, that lightning cage, not wasting any time. And the grab, very dangerous for Black Adam because it, it comes out so quickly when you cancel that forward one, two, into trait. The grab is a great option there. Oh wow, gets hit by the overhead two times in a row. Not quite sure what he's waiting for. Wow, gets a fully launching wake up attack. Now I think that's actually one thing Foxy tends to do, um, is actually he'll save that trait just to have it as a wake up whenever he needs it. Oh, backdash just away. Also, his placements, those dive kicks have been really strong at the moment. Well, he's been spending a lot of bar as well, trying to take that free damage. Foxy trying to wait out a little bit, but a bit dangerous at this health. How long those orbs have left up, though? He has to dodge for a little while longer. Isn't actually going to get the chance to an Osmo with really strong lead so far. Some good decision making. Really, really good decision making. Tries to Annie, doesn't quite work out. Not sure if that was beat of burn attempt. Oh, tries to Annie, but no, gets beat clean. This game has not gone very well for Foxy, I don't think. But Ops not to wager though, he could have taken a lot of guaranteed life back but Ops to save his bar. Awesome I mean, you look at the, the, the life difference right here, the meter at this point doesn't even matter. Wake up jump, but very bold decisions on wake up, not blocking at all. I mean, he's not, actually not building any bar though, because he's been sitting four bars for a long time. There's that jump back punish, but no, he's actually airborne. Or catch the low. Actually, one of the, the cool things about Catwoman, she has many, many meterless launches. Provided you can open up the right way, you can get some damage without spending too much bath. Tracks him on the forward dash there. Now this is going to be so hard. He's got the orbs up. Yeah, there's not much Fox he can do here. He's chip away at this point. Tries to go for them. Oh, not quite close enough to get the full confirm. Oh, oh that down one challenge is going to do it from Awesomeo. Really strong game one from Awesomeo so far, to be honest. I think it was the classic Black Adam, right? Where it's uh, those clutch ends of the rounds, just good management on uh, when to pop trait. Because... Uh, 
ultimately when you're almost dead and the trait is gone. I mean, there really is very little you can do. All right, so they're going straight, back straight in. into the rematch. There's a punish. Foxy ready for the dive kick, but again, another combo drop. Oh, tagging that mix up off the string. Oh, I think the back two, but not coming to the full string actually. Well played. Here's this, I mean, Osimo's <laughs> decision making so far has been so on point. A lot of damage, and I think he splats this one. Oh, wow. And the hard knockdown, too. Wow, the cross up forward three. Tricky stuff from Foxy Ground. Oh, wow. That's one of the things this he's been coming. That's one of the things he's actually been practicing is when he manages to hit you in the corner. Um, how does he mix? You know, how does he establish mix up? I think the big thing about that was he ended in the hard knockdown. Really sweet stuff. Oh, wow. Jump in. Oh, no air to air. Could have been big damage. No punish on the dive kick again. Awesome, really trying to spend a lot of bar to try and stay safer. Back to back, back three. Really making the most of that. Nice combo. He has another hard knockdown. Jumps clean over the lightning cage, but drops is confirmed. Awesome, throwing a lifeline to keep himself in this one. Good zoning, spending it. The meter burn. I mean, understandably, he had bar to work with. If he if actually beat out one of those lightning attacks, he would have got a full combo, but good patience from Awesome. Really good patience. Oh, wow, catches that max range. Jump two. Very patient neutral here. You can tell Osmo is waiting for that option to go for trade. Oh, nice confirm. Really oh, really nice confirm. damage. Ouch, 530 damage of a full screen meter burn dive kick. Disgusting. And now he's going to be completely happy playing this full screen game. One hit was all he needed. Oh, he went for it again. Oh, there's a trip what? card. Goes straight into the super. Oh, okay. and it hits. Okay, now. <laughs> that was a. Uh, he's I'm getting the damage. Super. He's actually getting a little bit of extra damage. He got two of them on the quick time. Oh, he's didn't quite do enough. Hang on, that's a comeback. Oh! Also, uh, I might understand maybe RIP headphone users, but what super was that? That was just her new mid, wasting no time, straight into super. I actually thought that we, we, we might have seen for potentially one of the very first times ever the, the, the quick time event that increased damage super winning around. <laughs> you know, getting that timing down. I feel like that was a very foxy grandpa super. Yeah, bear in mind, I mean, in Justice 1, this, this man patented the, the, uh, the back two super. Back two trait super. You can hear the crowd. Obviously, crowd really back in there, guy. Soko has a lot of love for their own guys. Yeah, of course, man. Oh, there's that dive kick. Oh, another missed punish, though, from Foxy. It's not a huge surprise to see Osmo still going to it. If you're not getting punished for it, then why not? Yeah, absolutely. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That jump, that jump back is a really nice answer for that dive kick, though, I think. And just generally how uh, Osmo wants to advance. But a nice challenge. Down one into full combo. There's that lightning again. Osmo trying to play it a bit more of a long range, this time without just dive kicks. Uh, just as I can say that, he does get punished for one, but it's being a little bit... Oh, wow. Oh, no. Not quite sure what Foxy was going for there. But I think the reason Osmo isn't really too fussed about it is because when he actually gets clipped by a jump back whip, he's still airborne. So the punish that Foxy gets is pretty meager. Wow, down one out of that. Brave for temper, did work out. I like it though. He realized that Foxy's not always like as close as he kind of could be when he gets those jump ins. Again, oh, I up down, down one. one. Oh, but a missed punish from Foxy definitely wasn't ready for that. Here we go. Trying to keep establish that distance. Foxy with a ton of life though, and that's going to be the first round. Spending one of them on the cat dash, but quite advantageous when you look at the bar. Oh, there's that block in the back three. Awesome, that patience is shining through, but Catwoman's so profiling misses the combo. Really unfortunate. I think Foxy's execution throughout this whole set's been uh, definitely not what we're used to seeing. Oh, Mia Bunda, I've kicked misses, but yes, a full combo anyway. Now he's going to go for the wager. This is going to be some guaranteed health back. Question is, how much does he spend here? Yeah, he's getting a lot of mileage out of his bar. Yeah, and I think that for that reason is why we just saw him spend one. And again, being very patient, but Foxy being very mobile, you know, at range, really trying to catch a whiff. Good block on the overhead. Not this time though. Oh, gets the low, full combo, and there's the wager. But no, can he, he is actually gonna st either stop him from getting health back or take some guaranteed damage. I foresee a 1-1 one, one trade. No, two, he just wants to hurt him. Oh, go straight through it. Oh, that connects, is he close off to the corner? Oh no, the lightning cage doesn't work out this time. A brave attempt and it has been working throughout the set, but just not in that moment. But I think it's um, on knockdown. That's, uh, it has seemed it's been quite difficult for Foxy to get a good read on how to pressure this guy and wake up. Also, right, you can say that. Choices. Like him, him finding, finally being able to establish that is what won him the game. You know, kind of blow through that wake up. Oh, oh wow, interrupt. interrupt! But no meter to get max damage though. Awesome. Move. Kept a little bit safer. Again, Foxy really weighing it out, weighing out the dive kick too. The whiff punish. An expensive way to take damage from Awesome right there. Oh, whiffs in for down one lightning. Just wants to get him out of his face. 
Also, we're really understanding the ranges. It can be dangerous here. Nice catch. Actually, very intelligent to go for the dive kick instead of the projectile. He wanted the restand, but Foxy does get a full combo. Oh, uh, catch him trying to press down one, I think. Hard knockdown. Is he going to loop it? Is that even going to kill? Wow, oh my that lord! Much damage! Match point for Foxy Grandpa in the Enough of an damage. Eye. That's the answer to that one. More than enough to finish that off. Ooh. Actually, one of the uh, the few unblockable attractions in the game. Good challenge. Ooh. Yorbs, yes, the wonderful activation from Osimo. Still no. match point, Foxy Grandpa, but looking really strong. I don't think that's too bad, Fox, though, because now Osimo is going into this round without the access to the trait cancels. Catwoman, just the infinite ability to low, low profile so many different things. Oh, wow, good block from Foxy and the cross up dive kick. What wow. a block! Full combo once again, here comes Foxy. What's the mix? Good block on the low. Ooh, challenge. Oh, gets a full jump in. Osmo, is he going to wager? Yes, he does. That was actually really good as well, because that was going to be a ton of damage. Osmo has been playing so on point. But he did wait until he had the second bar. He did wait. But he only spent one. He can use it to hurt, but again, Foxy does have access to trait himself. I wonder if uh, Osmo is going to try and do it. Is he going to try and spend... I'm about to say, did he try and spend bar for the oh. range? No clash. Oh, oh, he does have enough. That's it. Game over. Foxy does defeat Orsimo. Um, I'm assuming that was winners though, so it's not going to be um, the end of the world right now. But really tidy play for both players. I think Foxy just, I think he seemed to adapt to how Orsimo was trying to help. Orsimo just straight up played really well in that game. Like maximum damage. Like th the big one for me was that 530 damage clean oh, yeah. on that full screen meter bun dive kick. That is optimization. That is threatening. That's what you need to do. Like, we've seen that a lot today. Early stages of pool play, it's understandable when you've got players kind of dropping their combos here and there. And we, it's easy for us to kind of just say, oh, leave some damage on the table. With Black Adam, you're leaving 530 damage for a dive kick on the table. And if you're playing like Osimo and you're just nailing it every time, time after time after time, that is absolute what you need to do. To just lay on that pressure and make them really scared to fight you. Well, I think that comes down to uh, the strength, obviously, shouts to Wednesday Night Fights. You know, these, the weekly competition and access to offline competition, good players... That, you know, it's a, almost if supporting your local scenes can make you a better player in the long run. Hey, I think in, in this day and age right now, where there's so much money to play for, and there are so many good players all around, I think support your local scenes is absolutely the way to go. And that's, yeah, you know, SoCal in general has so many talented players, and that is why, because they it's the way that. It's the way we used to do it, you know? Everyone, everyone play, playing and training in their regions of their weak leagues and going to the majors and, you know, supporting their boys. You, you, you might not have heard it before, but, you know, we, we had the, the crowd bringing that support in and awesome when he was. You might not have heard it, I hope you did, but it was really cool. So while we get our next match underway, uh, we actually have a replay ready to go, which is the moment between Big Marcus, the Brainiac. Oh, excellent, more Brainiac. It was the moment, the heartbreaking moment. Um, currently not this one, don't worry guys, we'll get the other one. We're, we're, still, we're still gonna set the story. But that was still a good one. one, that was still a good replay. We're still anyway. ramping up. But, but here, here's the real one, here's the real one. That, that wasn't what I expected, oh, okay. either way. <laughs> I'm We're on the way. I'm, 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 I swear, I'm slicker than this. I swear, I swear. Here I'm, we are. This is the one. Great. This is the one. So right here, he got that cross up, and oh, that I, was I it. still, I still get sad to see it because it was that moment right there. He covered his advance, the great cross up, but he challenged it. He tried to punish, and he baited it. But the back three. That was dream situation though for Brainiac. That was, I've got my minion going this way, and I'm going that way. And I'm going on the other side. He's not oh. ready for it. He even tried right. to like, he even tried to normal through it, but it just ever so slightly too slow. It was the missed time on the, on the back three input, because he, that small walk back at the very end, that's the heartbreaker. Because that's the kind of play that when you make it, you go, man, I'm sick. That was, that was my moment. That's the moment where, even if it's not the set, you pop up and go, yeah, that was it. But unfortunately, you know, either way, that was actually some good play from Big Marcus throughout the whole set anyway. And we will be seeing his Brainiac some more throughout the tournament. But Royale actually ultimately did take that set. No, absolutely. But for now, guys, we're going to go to a very short break while we get this next match underway. So don't go anywhere because Comrade Breaker 2017 will continue after this short break.
Welcome back everybody to Injustice 2 at Combo Breaker 2017. We've already had a bunch of good games underway. We are mustard and ketchup once again as always. And we're going to have Forever King Jr. facing off against Ekidus. So it's going to be Canada versus USA. So Ekidus, once again, is another player that's going to be fresh off a tournament. Toru Yukon, right? He had a really good showing at Toru Yukon. Indeed. Indeed he has, but Forever King Jr. also no stranger to tournaments. And uh, Bane, I think, one of his favorite characters in the game. One of the first characters I think people really saw him use. And we've just seen Firehazard with a sick main, and here we go, Forever King Jr. already just getting in there. But I'm curious to see what kind of main differences the two players will have between them. It may come down to uh, neutral or choice up close. I feel like Bane up close is rather universal. If you Look can at read how the jumps, debuff is taking his car back though. Ouch! The unblockable interactable though did a fantastic job of splatting and just waiting out the debuff time. Super good. Oh, there we go, the Bane Bomb spends the bar to get the corner repositioning. Pumps up to level two. Cat Dash is going to connect though. Oh, nice corner repositioning himself. Good damage. Immediate backdash. You know, I think the backdash actually might have been on a read of a wake up. Because bear in mind, when you've knocked down Bane with Venom, his wake up attack has just got armor as well. You know, so pressuring him when he's not got the Venom activated is very, very risky. He's going to get the grab. Opting not to spend the bar. Sometimes you see him wait it just to get the, uh, the Venom debuff. But that, that, that's always been a really interesting level to Bane, though. Even though he doesn't really do any damage when he's debuffed, you can still waste that time. So even though you're seeing people spend by, it's all to just maximize uptime on the Venom itself. One more hit, it's gonna do it! That charge, that backdash sealed the deal. The second he backdashed, that was guaranteed. Nothing he can do about that one. All right, level three Venom now, so be careful. Gets hit by oh. anything, it's gonna hurt. Full whiff punish! Are we gonna see a clash here, though? No, not necessarily. Might have been a potential repositioning combo, either way. Actually, the drop, he's not had the chance to clash if he wanted to. And there he goes, he's going to spend the bar. Yes, he is. Now he's got Venom up again. Now, now be careful. It's, it's so hard to wager bait. Yeah, uh, that, that, I was just about to mention that. It's, it's individual, chunky hits. Here we go, though. The chance. No, he's saving it. He okay. didn't wait. He's not wagering. He's not oh, wagering. No. That, oh, that did so much damage. Why didn't he wager? But, I mean, he, he must have been saving it for something. He must have just been saving it for, like, big damage, maybe super unclashables, but unfortunately, Meter is no good to a dead man, and he's going to go down 1-0 already. Now, the crowd is being quite boisterous about that decision. However, I mean, that, that is, it was risky. That was a very risky choice. I just don't think he was prepared to take the damage that he took. I think that's Bane, man. To. That is Bane in a nutshell. Ooh. Neutral jump. going to completely make it miss. Here we nice go. Nice confirmed. Oh, Cat dash. Oh wow, that back three, wonderfully spaced. Actually gonna go through the grab as well, because it's technically a little bit airborne for a duration. Oh, there's that chase down, but now he's on full level three Venom debuff. This is going to hurt. Ouch, yes indeed. That is why Bane does not like being on debuff if he spent three of it beforehand. That does so much damage. And he was still kind of on debuff temporarily at the start. Good wake up to punish the whiff. Wow, and gets the transition too. I wonder if that was um, what Normally, I think actually, if you're Catwoman and you've got someone in the corner, normally you'd see them try and keep it, but I guess he really doesn't mind the transition too much. Or maybe get access to some new environment tractables here, where at the very least he didn't use up the rest of the Venom uptime. Oh, nice air to air, actually. Very good decision. Again, a bit more damage than we were expecting. Oh, well, there's that down one. Full corner combo here. He's popping the Venom just to keep himself from going into that debuff. Really smart use from Forever King Jr. However, now, he's got a long time to wait before he gets it back. Are we going to see a bar spent? We are indeed. Corner repositioning. But still debuffed. There's that wake up back three. Back three again. And Here now he's go. got it back. Now he's dangerous again. I don't think, yeah. I think end the round as fast as possible when you've got the level one. So when you're debuffed, it's for the as, as little time as possible. Oh, and there's that wager. Now this is good because he's going to, at the very least, he might get a hold back. It depends if Ekidus wants to spend everything to stop him from getting a maximum amount. He tries to, but now he has access to Venom again. Oh no, maybe not quite. He actually still had to wait for it to come back, but it was still oh, a level oh. one. The Bane Mixer. Nice, actually, good patience. Oh, forward dash and a prediction. Oh, oh, here we go. We're punished with the Bane Bomb. He's still got another one left in the tank, and this is going to do big damage. Oh, yes, be careful. No, there's no wager. That oh. was the most important wager of his set so far. No, absolutely. He's definitely not going to lose game two in the same fashion. And bear in mind, actually, that was a very expensive sequence from Trevor King, so he's going to give Exodus that damage back. But look at how long this debuff is taking to come back. Exodus needs to get that hit now when he hasn't got to worry about the armor. No, at the same time, Trevor King, be patient, he's waiting for it. Oh, press the button. He's, he's popped gonna, Venom. Yeah. He might be going for the wake up. Indeed there it is. He is. What's next? Jump back. Overhead. 
The grab to go through for the trees! Back to back! He's oh. not dead, one more will do it! Oh, and the read once again, you have to be so careful letting Bane live. Because that will happen. Ultimately, ultimately, it's all coming down to not only good debuff management, but when Forever King Jr. is taking damage, he's using Venom to deliberately take less. Well, damage. you've always got to treat Bane like a like, like a, a coiled viper, right? When he's on that debuff, and you know you need that hit, but he's playing, he's sitting there, he's crouching, he's waiting, he's waiting for that that chance to hit you to waste time. It's not a question of just, ah, oh, he's on debuff, just rush him down. Waste just get his, a hit. Uh, waste his time 2017, the Bane's edition. Maybe he's taking a little bit of time to think about this, I think. I, think I don't think we're going to see a character change. No, I mean, as, as far as I'm aware, Echidus is just a Catwoman. Catwoman main through and through. But again, we're not seeing a huge amount of um, today wake up. Another true fact. I think, I mean, because they, I mean, we can't forget, right, Injustice 2 is very, very new. Could it be that the community in general just isn't quite versed in that being such a key tool at the moment? Or perhaps Bane has answers to deal with it that Forever King knows about that he just doesn't want to give him the chance. That kind of the next level, Yomi. Not a huge amount of damage, but again, just anything to use up that time. Anything to use up that time is good. Wow. Oh, nice whiff punish from Echidus. Actually quite a brave whiff punish, because you know that was a back-to-back -back armor. The Blender, no way out at the moment. Again, he has so much Venom left, but we're probably going to see him spend it a bit more just to avoid debuff. Indeed, kicks the tire at him. Doesn't now he's debuffed. Good throw tech, though. Actually, oh, we've better down, too. Really clutch throw tech, actually, but interrupts as well. Now, he's not quite kept him in the corner. However, the round with that much health, this is what he needs. He needs yeah, the to, life to needs prove to take a game. Uh-oh, unless he goes down like this. We heard him pop that Venom when he saw him jump. That could have been disastrous. I think we've seen more armor clash in this set than any other set so far. So much damage to get the knockdown. Here we go again, chasing down that jump. And Forever King Jr. is on match point. Yes, but Echidus has some time to get some debuff here. If he can get a hit, but again, Forever King playing that defensive style, just trying to waste the time. And now he has Venom again. And he got the Bane Bomb for Oki. Wake up attack, brave stuff, but I respect it. Good decision actually, using the trait just as a wake up attack. But the armor collides and a clean punish. Here comes Echidus. But all the meter in the world to wager, he doesn't want to let him do it. Oh, wow, really good throw. Oh, wow, no fear, just running straight in. But Echidus has smash. to be careful here because he can't afford to wager. If he does, Forever King Jr. is going to hurt him. But just as I can say that, Forever King Jr. goes up for his own wager. Guaranteed life regen. Four or three, what do you reckon? Three, it must be three. Oh, no, four. he bets all of it. He was expecting Echidus to spend something there. Absolutely, you know that for a fact. But he is on debuff. Echidus can keep pressure going. He might be able to do something here, but again, Forever King just putting up that wall. Oh, that could be the start of it. It was not that far to work with, but he's got all the armor he could ever need. There we go. Gets the game on the board. Very important game as well. Absolutely. I think it's a big adjustment. It's kind of Echidus kind of just finding his own answers for the armor. Because that fundamentally, that's Bane. Bane wants to Venom up, get armor on everything, and just smother you. He doesn't want to let you have anywhere to move. But one of the things about Bane is players of Bane really do favor specific options um, in different ways. You know, they, they, they do tend to put their own stamp on the character. So in a 3 out of 5 setting, you really need to adapt to how these players are using this character. Also, he just Bane bombed a, me, uh, a back 3 for I, I, I actually was going to point that out. That was insane. That was so sick. There's the low. So much patience from Forever King Jr. There you go. Spending the bar. Chunky damage. He just wants that corner of everything. Mia burns the wake up. Echidus gets his own full combo here. Drops the follow up into a full wake up from Dripping Jr. Disastrous. Venom level two. Nice chunk of damage if he lands one hit. Really trying to blow through, but being a little bit too eager. No full combo. Echidus leaving him alive. And does get the round anyway. But just like that, Echidus looking like he was completely down for the count. One life bar away from bringing this entire set back to all. Down ones. Let me, there's a. Bane's down one, still as good as ever. Oh, nice anti air for every king. Finds himself a match point again. And he also has the meter advantage. This could be quite dangerous. Bane with two bars is like 50% life if he's got Venom. You just want to listen. As soon as you hear that Venom noise, it's time to worry. Full punish. Here we go. I, th I reckon we might see Forever King can actually save the bar. He's not going to use the wager. However, four bars and Venom, this could be death. He just needs to get the hit first. I mean, to be fair, Exodus doesn't have any bar to wager with, so if he does get opened up by some stuff here. It's going to hurt big time. Uh oh, just like this. That's going to use up a nice amount of time. 
actually has no access. He has one scratch, so he's gonna get the wake up now. Wow, good block on that jumping. So you can kind of swap directions at the last minute. Oh, I went straight to level two. No messing around. Echidna's actually, you, he, is, he is keeping his eyes glued, but here we go! So much damage! Very intelligent wager though, very but good. But this is also going to get that debuff down for Remington Jr., so Echidna's instantly in a really good position here. But I think actually, you can tell that Echidna has his eyes glued to that Venom meter at Ooh. all times. Though. That max range sweep too. Nice match, yep. Can't really take much else at this point. This is Bane with no bar, but Venom to work with, but no health to armor oh, through. Hang on, he's got the knockdown, but he doesn't, he doesn't have the health to armor with. Oh! You know exactly why he did that jump back as well. He did the jump back because he expected some kind of wake up. He was going to punish it, with punish it, and that would have been game over. Respectable composure from Echidus though. He, he was down hardcore those first two games. It was looking completely one-sided, but that adjustment, I think a big part of it is how he's just managing He's playing around the Venom a lot more now than he was earlier. Well, he, he almost completely underestimated the Venom in, this, in the first two games. He took so much damage before he had a chance to do anything. Oh, armor the break. armor break there was a very crucial way to start things off. Spending the bar as well to get a bit more damage. Here we go. Another use of the wake up. I mean, that really is very characteristic. And we see Catwoman players really save that trait as a free wake up attack. Sequence begins. What's he going to get? Back to back. Will it be three? Oh, he called the bluff. But it doesn't matter. Ow! Oh, he gets it right before debuff to maximize the damage. But here we go. He's got to hold all of this. Good defense on Forever King Jr. Just to completely wait out all this time. Oh, almost gets opened up, but is going to throw him into the corner. Nothing worse than dropping a combo and getting choke slammed. That's match point for Forever King Jr. again. But there's more layers to it. He also gave Bane the corner. Not anymore. The reposition. Probably going to do guaranteed chip here. Yeah. And he's put himself in the corner, so he's got to, be, he's got to watch out. I understand the wake up attempt as well from Jr. You know, though. He was basically chip damage away. He was going for the jump in. All trips him up. Full whiff punish. You can hear the crowd. I mean, there's they're supporters either way. They both want one of their boys to take this one. But for King Jr., massive meter advantage. Oh, but there's the armor break once again. Can't take much of this much longer. Gets a nice chunk. But again, the debuff. It's down for so long. The whiff, unfortunate, has to clash. That whiff might have cost Forever King Jr. this entire set. Echidus, he can tie with him here. He can actually stop him getting any health back. What a comeback from Echidus. We have to say, he's kept this together so well. He's enough for that hit. He just needs oh, it. No, oh, there's a full punish. Charge to reposition the corner. And here we go. The Venom is back for three stacks. Number oh, one, no, he whiffed off the uppercut. He went for a Venom upper and got a down two instead. That could have cost him everything. But no, he didn't go for the Venom either. That is very unfortunate. But because of that, Echidus taking that one and running away with it. And his Canada boys popping off for him in the crowd as well. Not a huge surprise there. Let's not forget Echidus had a really good showing at Tori Yukon last week. So their guy's all coming out in force to support their own. Well, I mean, Echidus has got access to Biohazard. He's going to be familiar with that matchup. You that know, was a really sick set, though, from start to finish. Really Absolutely. good. Three games straight from Echidus. And it was. A, a, a light switch adaptation. Oh, I'm doing this one thing and that's it. Now we've got quite a juicy game coming up. We have Ooh, the return, the return of CR Biohazard against Method Rio. Recently picked up by Method as well. Congratulations to him. Going to be doing those guys proud, no doubt. I hear he's doing quite well in Mortal Kombat as well. Rio is really comfortable, it seems. He really seems to have like found his groove in Injustice 2 because he has had an undeniably successful Netherrealm career. You know, Rio's history with Mortal Kombat games spans all the way back to like, you know, the MK versus DC, Re the I Deadly mean, Alliance, Deception. So people say there is old school, and then there is Rio old school. This guy goes as far back as it goes with competitive Netherrealm games. You know, I mean, he, he was up there with Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 back in the, you know, back in the days. Well, MK9, Evo finalist, you know, multiple top eight placements all over the, all over the US. Uh, winning well, quite a lot of it. It's kind of the, the premier cabal of MK9 was Rio. He's kind of the, the very first top level cabal, I think, that really maximized everything, that really showed the community how crazy the character was. Injustice, very good. Very strong Injustice player. Didn't play it a whole lot though, not a huge yeah. amount. But when he did play, very strong and a, a force to be reckoned with through and through. But with Injustice 2, and I think the, the later stages of Mortal Kombat X, um, on top of being a competitive player, I think Rio has adopted much more of a mentor 
tutor. He's a tutor. He makes a lot of content. This guy streams. This guy does YouTube. If you want to learn Netherrealm games on a competitive level, Rio is that source. But on the flip side, Biohazard, this guy is a competitor through and through. You know, and he's had his fair share of results. You know, the Bane, the premier Bane player. Biohazard's had a good couple of years. You know, he really kind of broke onto the scene with his brother Honeybee. They kind of became. The oh, premier see, flash Tekken master as well. They were like. kind of like they became the premier sort of flash and bane of the world in the first injustice. They came along sort of, uh, I guess like a year into the game's life, and then in Mortal Kombat X, Biohazard just Ferator, God Lord, completely had just the monopoly on Ferator. But Bane was always his comfort zone. Not to and be confused. here he is. He has Bane again. Not to be confused with the Honeybee, the Flash God Lord. Of course, there are two in the household. But Biohazard, I mean, Bane really is his character. If I was to sum up any Netherrealm character with Biohazard, Bane is that guy. I mean, isn't the Venom partly where the name Biohazard came from? Isn't it? That's Resident Evil reference. Or was it? Okay. I thought I heard that somewhere, but perhaps not. Uh, I am stick. It vaguely fits, so I'll give that to you. But Darkseid I'll take that way anyway. Now, Darkseid actually is a character that I think Rio's been playing the most. Um, in a competitive setting, although Rio plays many, many characters, Darkseid is the one that we see the most in a competitive setting. This matchup, again, it's going to be a couple of factors. A single hitting regular wake up, however, a double hitting quick meter burn wake up combined with knockdown based zoning. Kind of hard to call this matchup, really. Well, Rio has a, a very kind of unique dark side, and I think that's one thing he's got going for him right now. And that's, that's something that Rio has always had to his strength. You know, he kind of he doesn't really go by what the community says to do. If he, he plays a lot of characters in every game he plays, but he plays them in a way that he thinks is effective. It's a very smart way, you know, I mean, Rio is one of the biggest lab He monsters. thinks outside the box, whereas Biohazard plays with his heart. Yeah, through and through. This is, and Bane is the character to do that. I feel like this is a, a heart versus mind matchup we're about to see. So let's go, it's Method Rio versus CR Biohazard. Well, it's not down one. Environment okay, bounce, okay. that's the knowledge straight away. 512 damage to start things off. Ouch. The tick grab though, it's gonna comfortably get that Venom back as well and immediately challenging with a wake up, but taking the negative frames and grabbing anyway. Oh wow, now that's a tricky set for the body splash. Body splash hits in front, but lands behind. The Injustice 1 classic. Now these the minions, now. these minions I think are gonna be very pivotal in this matchup. You really need that extra assistance against someone as, as active as Bane. You can see Rio just really trying to build that space, but hits the tick grab. Here comes Biohazard once again. The blender is patented main blender. Good use of backdashes, actually, Rio. Just trying to get out of there. But again, the Bane bomb comes through. And look at all that venom. Oh, there's the block this time. Rio scouts it. Here we go. Oh, no, the jump in has to clash. Normally, clashes are pretty decent regardless, but because he's had so much life down, I think this is just a... Oh my god, and the three bars to deny it completely. This what is going to be difficult. Oh, and the minion just that. hanging out, just watching it. Oh wow, catches him on the startup. Come back here, my son! The overhead again! Very good game number one for Biohazard. That's just Bane doing Bane things. When you've got Biohazard behind the, the wheel, it can get quite dangerous. So what Dragon Rio's going to do here, I mean, he's gone back to Select Fire. This could be just giving himself some time, maybe thinking of something else, but fundamentally, one problem he seems to be having is everything Darkseid's doing hits once, and it has that recovery to it. So if he just plows through it with Venom, it seems quite hard to deal with, at least by what we've seen. So, Superman. This is also an intelligent pick. Why is that? Because Superman's trait armor breaks, and that goes through Venom armor. Exactly. Now, we talk about how Rio's been putting a lot of time in studying the game. These little things to decide matchups. Footsies from Bio, though. Jesus. Just that, that slight walk back, sees the 4 2, and it's that 1 1 with punish. And speaking of it, tech for days, the down one to make the wake up whiff completely. And here comes Rio. He's got lots of work to do in this first round. The Venom is just making him so scared to press buttons. Indeed, there's that Bane Bomb, doesn't spin the bar. Delays the wake up, but he waits for it. Biohazard knew it was coming. Now here we go. He's going to establish as much fast screen presence as possible, but immediately actually with the meter burn roll. He's making this matchup seem totally fine. All backs off, probably expected a wake up of some sort. But we were actually able to tie this one out. Tries to whiff punish with a dive ball, but it just missed. I've got to say, like, you, you can tell there are very distinct reasons that Rio has picked this matchup in particular. But Bio so far has just done a good job of making it seem like a mute point. Oh wow, drops the combo, but fortunately Rio is able to still get the chip kill. 
That would have been a heartbreaking loss if we dropped that one there. Now, nah, it's a full combo. Didn't have trait though, so it's not going to be the big boy damage that we see. Oh, Klaus through the dive bomb. Throws him straight back in there. Rear's not having any of it. Oh, the dive bomb on a read, unfortunately. Although he got around to wake up, he didn't quite get a punish. And he lost well, we are going to go into this one with level one debuff. There we go. Wow, down one off the body splash. Quite brave. I think he just realized that the body splash connected from really high up in the air. So that down one's quite likely it's going to squeeze through. Oh. Nice little knockdown right there. Here comes Rio, though. He's done so much damage, he's going to build trait here, no doubt. We'll now he's, great. he's gone for that trait. But he's also debuffed that chip damage. It's going to be monstrous, but he doesn't even need it. It's the, the dive punch back to back to take it. There really wasn't a whole lot Bio has done about that, I think. I mean, it was a combination of debuff combined with uh, the increased damage and the armor breaking that Superman has. Bear in mind as well, you know, it's, it's a very universal trait for Superman because it's, you know, it's ship damage, it's damage, it's plus frames, you know, just to name a few. Now, the change to Harley, not surprised at all. To the see crowd this. likes it. And this is one thing that I think Bio has. It, it, it's important to show this now. Willing to change when he seems to be encountering a bad matchup. His character loyalty will only get you so far against some characters. If a matchup is just that bad, you need counters to deal with it. And it's not like he's got a bad Harley, he does have what? tech. Hyena combos. At the same time, Rio plays so many characters. Even if he loses this one, Rio's going to have the option to change himself. Nice. The down one in the tantrum. That's a full combo right there. And a good conversion, too. And the tick damage of the Play Doctor. Here we go. Look at the damage just ticked down bit by bit. There's the block. There's the plus frames. Down one into low scoop. A lot of patience coming out by it. Try to win punish again. A lot of those down ones, I think, are going to be tantrums. Nice catch on the frost breath. Oh, the Hyena trade! I think that's why we see Bai has a go for it, because even if she gets hit, the second that's been thrown, the Hyena comes out regardless. But again, jump back air laser, a nice answer for this grounded zoning. Speaking of zoning though, it does seem like Bai has it's kind of understood the, the flow of how to deal with the Superman eye lasers. Oh, there's a cross up dive punch, tricky stuff coming out from Rio. Full combo into death and a round up. Looking really strong. And to be honest, not a whole lot amount of meter on the side of Bai has it. He's not gonna get a full combo here. Does get the repositioning, not sure that's what he wanted. Or well, tries to avoid it, but there's only so far you can go, I think. At this point, any damage is free damage, and uh, wow, she shot first. him in the face. She did. Superman can't take that. But at the same time, all this space behind him to work with, there's the high in the trade. But it's kind of coming out in Rio's favor right now. He does have that life lead. I was about to mention, I mean, like, get, having her one hyena down and you still having the light lead is a fantastic Ooh. situation. Catches the straight blast as well. Plus frames. Plus frames. All back dashes out of it. I think I, he's quite happy to just wait this out. I think the backdash was quite important data. You wonder if next time he goes for trait, we might see Rio try and chase that down with another forward two. Man, every time Biohazard looks like he's about to get the zoning advantage, Rio just tags him with something and it evens things out. But just as I can say that, we see a full environment transition. I love how much this crowd loses itself when a uh, transition happens. You so rarely see it. And when it happens, they love it. Well, it's because so often you might want to just keep the corner pressure, so it's not really worth it. But sometimes you just need that damage. There There's the plus frames. Bio sits there this time and Rio senses it. Hang on, he's going to go on Clashable. Very close now. Both players not having a lot of bar. Oh, clutch block on that cross up. Is and that going to hit? And by bar, I meant health, of course. Ah, oh, no. That was a heartbreaking miss. He could have meter burned that, but isn't able to. There's so much chip on that straight laser. Biohazard cannot take a single hit. Hang on, here comes Bio. Oh, no, goes over. The cupcake misses. Oh, the delay. That air dash was so smart. This is a zoning battle. One more hit's going to decide. Either way, the jump again. This is too close to call. Oh, they're looking for that final hit. Oh. They are both playing a game of five field, but the down two doesn't work. And the air laser for Rio intelligently placed. But you can see they're just trying to navigate. They understand Superman, it's the sweeping laser on the ground, in the air, or the slightly slower straight laser. That would do the, the bigger chip damage. And then Harley, quick shots, you, air shots. You want to know the biggest fake out at the very end was the jump into the back dash. Because that was a bait for air laser. And it got him to jump. He almost jumped into it. However, Rio looking really good. However, as I said, the back three does drop. Very unfortunate. And that's a full combo for Biohazard. Answering straight yeah, back. He also spent his first bar on that too. So he's already lost the bar. Bit of a scramble. Bit of locks in the tantrum. I think that was probably a forward two attempt. Didn't quite work out though. A forward three instead. Definitely not what he wanted. Juggles again. 
So we're going back to this full screen game that Bayou's been doing a lot of so far. Oh, the Hyena completely misses. Full combo. Here comes Superman. Opting to go for the forward three. Quite smart, actually. Rio didn't want the transition. He wants the corner. That's what Superman needs. Now, this opener right here, that could be huge for this set because it's going to give Rio not only match point, but a huge health lead. This is a very comfortable match point for Rio. He hasn't got a whole lot of barb. I mean, just look at the life. And Superman zoning doesn't really require meter to be effective either. Oh, jumps over. Question is, how much of these is Rio going to take before he just takes that one laser to even things out? Oh no, doesn't quite capitalize off the cupcakes. If Bio can actually zone out for this whole round and take damage without getting hit himself, it's a completely even trade. Oh, good block from Rio. The Rio's defense has been absolutely incredible. Interesting now the, uh, the three off that actually did cause a low profiling situation. Another Vulcan Whip with drop damage. Oh no, misses it. There's the whiff punish. Things are tied up. Now it's uh, still match point for Rio, but again, you look at the bar, there's a lot of potential damage on the table here. Oh. Oh, wow, the hyena! The hyena. Misses. Wow. It forsaken him! Good see all that bar that Biohazard's built though, he has maximum wager potential, and then the yeah. push block just to get out of forward two. I like that, because then it puts him at the range where he can start playing this long range game. Push blocking that forward two, three in certain situations is so pivotal. And oh, like this wow. is a nice catch! But Rio, look at the bar. Four bars, three now, but with a full trait stocked, locked and loaded. No punish from Bio. He might live to regret it right now. Oh, there's the block this time. Gets it. Not a full grounded punish, but a little bit of damage nonetheless. But he has to watch out because Rio has super. Nice catch of the Ooh. cupcake. Mid air. No air dash today. What, one more game. Which way? This really, is so close. That was a really clutch win for Biohazard. Two all apiece now. But the thing is, does Rio stay with Superman or does he go for a swap? I think actually he's just gone straight in for the rematch. I Not a huge surprise. I mean, that was really no, he's, close. He's actually gone in for a cannon. Is he going to oh. go back to dark side, perhaps? Wait, yes, that's exactly what he's done. So, dark side looked very uncomfortable, however. But that was versus Bane. I was about to say, now he has the luxury of having that final counter pick. Now he's gone back to dark side. You can see we're already trying to build that space. Eh? He must just be so much more confident with that long range keep away game. Well, dark side, even though Harley's projectiles are very, very fast. Darkseid's projectiles will still knock down, so a trade is still going to be a relatively even trade. The Hyena just trying to fill the space. Really good use to the environment so far from here, just getting them out of the way, but in situations that there's really nothing Bio can do but block them. And the end, you, you can really see just how beneficial the knockdown of that Omega Beam is. It's so, I mean, the second he gets the knockdown, he gets something else for free. Rio's opting to go for a projectile here, but he could go for a trait. He could go for a teleport. He could go for something really tricky. Nice oh, punish. down one laser. Or Omega Beam, I should say. <laughs> Not to get confused. And again, just the meter burn to establish all of that screen control. The boom tube just to get out of dodge. Not even be near the corner. Keep playing this spacing game. The trait comes through again. Completely misses, though. If anything, though, just look at the pace that Rio has just slowed this game down to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the patience. I mean, Rio, a historically very patient player, right? And it's match point already through just that solid brick wall defense. At the same time, if Bio can open him up somehow here, that is going to do a chunk. But that's easier said than done when Rio is just putting up this brick wall of defense. Jumps straight over the environment. And so as I can say that, a clean jump in to even things up. No, oh, he no! the combo. No attempt on the anti-air. Now this is all going to be free damage for Rio. This combo drop is so heartbreaking. And look at the bar that he's built back. If it was match point in the corner with no bar, he would have been much more comfortable with this. Indeed, but now it's match point for both of them. Bio trying to spend some bar to get in through this, but Rio just content sitting there, doing this, da this damage, chipping him down piece by piece. As each one of these lasers connect, it gets so much harder for Bio to pull things back. The access to clash becomes more limited. The amount of projectiles he can take becomes so much less. Oh no, catch him jumping in as well. Rio gets the minion. Oh, tricky stuff. Teleports out as well, gives himself the space. No, no punish, punish. The tantrum. That missed punish could be a big mistake. Here comes Bio again, trying to really use the Hyena to establish space, not to give him the space to run. Oh, this, this, so this, this is approaching crunch time for both these guys. They have to be so careful what they do here. No wake up from Rio. The Dude, patience. The low. No full combo. And again, force to clash. Three bars each. What is this wager? What do we think it is? I mean, surely he's not going to let him get any health packs. Three does. each. Yes. yes, it is. But he's got the, the hyenas. Oh, where's the, the, the minion connects? Oh, no. The chase down. Again, we're so close. Down to the final projectile. <gasps> that connects, but only just built the bar. And he is going to catch him. Jumping out. Biohazard with the clutch plays at the final moments. 
Rio came so close to clutching that one down. The dark side swap was such a good idea, but ultimately not enough to stop Biohazard. Now you pretty much wondered at that, at that last moment. Um, when he landed the air shot and didn't meet burn, it's like, was that a crucial mistake? It, it, and he, he could have been, it, it could have been, but he was able to keep it together. But Rio, fair play to the guy, I mean, already looking really strong in this game, playing so many different characters. Rio, he's got Scarecrow, we've seen him play uh, Darkseid, obviously we saw him play some Superman 2, he plays Batman as well, almost all of the legacy characters I oh, think yeah, at this absolutely. point. So these guys putting in the work, but what a set. It displayed fantastic patience, yes. I think, from both players. You know, it's, it's actually with Biohazard in particular, how he can play a character like Bane, who gets right up in your face and he goes mental, right? And it's non-stop aggression over and over and over. But then when he's forced to play Harley, he will take the pace and just opposite end of the seesaw. I, and I would it. like I would like to see Biohazard be one of the most successful players in Injustice 2 because he's he's made that change, right? He's now playing other characters to cover those bad bay matchups. But that was last match. We now have Star Charger versus playing to win. Once again, guys, this is Pool F3, but it is the winner's quarter... Oh, sorry, winner's quarterfiles. Quarterfi I quarterfiles? I will work the English language someday. The winner's quarterfiles. I won't say winner's quarters, and I got that wrong, but we'll, we'll, we'll phase over that now. We've already we have a good match coming up. We've already seen a good number of BXA yeah. players today, as it is. But uh, Star Charger, definitely a bit of a hype man in the NRS scene. Katana Loyalist, uh, do he play in Injustice 1? That's actually a very good question. I'm not sure he plays in Injustice 2. Playing to win on the flip side is... A self-proclaimed zoning master. Zoning Academy, one of the founding members of the NRS Zoning Academy. I'm in that academy, you know. <laughs> of course, but play, <laughs> playing to win for good reason. Really, I think Deadshot is kind of, and, and I, th I think it's fair for me to quote when I say this, that Deadshot is everything he could want in a character. Absolute raw keep away. But elements of mix up close. Now Catwoman though, historically in Injustice. It was Catwoman that uh, Star Charger played in the first. Historically though in Injustice, Catwoman's a harder character to zone out than some. Because just how small she is. She's very agile, she's very fast in this game. Her walk speed is immaculate. And Cat one Dash. of the best. Cat Dash having armor when you meet a burn it is a big matchup changer. If she makes the read on the right thing and plows through, she can get a massive payout for it. Because if you hit that meet by Cat Dash, that's a full combo. Now, there are some players out there with Deadshot that will try and play that, that, that up-close game as well. When it comes to playing to win, I expect to see strings used only to establish space. No mix, just pure keep away. This is what playing to win has spent years doing, and he really has perfected the art of Netherrealm zoning. Oh, he's already built another bar that he can go for Assault Rifle if he wants to, and uh, no, he doesn't spin the bar. Oh, he tries to bait it, wow. Makes you think that that cat dash could have been a punish on the meteor bird attempt, but playing to win, maybe scouting it out. Staggering the low into grab, establishing that mix-up quite early, very important. Wow, jumping in right as he went for the rifle. You know playing to win was not looking for it at that moment. This is where it can get quite dangerous though, because Deadshot officially has nowhere to run. Star Charger has that rushdown game on point. Meteor bird rolls just to get out of the corner, beautiful decision. That's one thing that we see um, very keep away heavy characters do all the time, is once they're cornered, they don't want to get that one hit and reverse momentum in the corner. They just want to get out of dodge and go back to mid -screen. Yeah, it's going to be in this one, get that chip damage on deck. He has another bar if he gets to, but Star Charger trying to get those whips to stop him from doing it. One more, as soon as he saw he didn't wake up attack there. Or oh, who's on the ground? That was going to be some guaranteed chip. Again, working his way in, not quite enough chip. The jump two doesn't work out. The back dash as well, hang on, he's still in it. That's actually two for two cat dashes that playing twin has tried to punish, but has just been ever so slightly too late on. I think he's trying to punish it with back one, and because it's slower than like a standing one, he's not getting the punish outright. A fair trade right now, both players using the neutral space to get guaranteed trade. Quite smart, but unfortunately, he has, he has to land a hit. I like that. Down one straight to the shot, that pushes away. Very smart. Especially when he's got the blue trait activated to make those wrist cannon shots send full screen. Here's the stagger game coming through, but he's having none of it with the meter burn back three. Star Charger with the right decisions. Oh, tricky cross up. No, he stayed in front. Here comes the overhead. Mix up again. Although it doesn't get blocked, he does manage to establish space, but again, straight back into the corner from Star Charger. Here we go. Wow, interesting that the down one actually this time wasn't into a projectile. That's a very, very important projectile to land. Now we have maximum screen space. He has got one bar for rifle, but I wonder if he's actually going to spend it. No, he's faking it out. Oh, here we go. Oh, gets hit by another meter, but back three, but too close to the corner. Gets the punish this time, but is able to wager in time. So I think one thing that we're noticing here from playing to win is, Almost every single hit is designed to close in that, uh, sorry, to uh, separate the space. 
Here we oh, go. Wow, catch them trying to jump and wake up. And that throw, that clutch throw. Is that the first grab we saw him go for all game? I think one of. Um, we did see a, uh, a low stagger into grab at the very beginning. I think it's possible playing to win must have forgot about it, but catches it again. One thing Star Charge does a good job of, I think, and actually Catwoman in particular is, I don't see her being uh, struggling massively against Deadshot because she's got she's got that range, right? It's not that Catwoman gets point blank and that's when she's dangerous. She's dangerous from jump distance as well, and that's a distance that Deadshot isn't super comfortable in against someone. Well, I actually thought playing too much to juggle three of those wrist shots in the air. Uh, wasn't able oh, to do. Wow, there, there's the answer that Meteor Burn Cat Dash should say, no, I know you're going to go for the rifle here, and this is going to go straight through it. Nice today, wake up for playing to win, but again, the jump to whip. No combo drop, but actually, a combo drop trying to go for damage. Unfortunately, doesn't get it again. Oh, wow, nice quick conversion there. Goes to the blue traits again. Probably gonna use a couple of shots to really not waste the trait. Again, trying to separate full screen. I love the fact that after the cat dash, Star Charger is trying to back dash to make the punish as tight as physically possible. Yeah, but to the point that I don't think we've actually seen Plane Twin be able to successfully punish it yet. I think a big part of that though is because he's still consistently trying to punish with uh, back one rather than a standing one. He's Good, trying to go for the launch. Oh, but Anti is just clean. What is get out of that corner with the jump out, but Star Charge just says no. Matchup's being played very well at the moment. However, jumping himself into the corner, I'm not sure about that one. Forcing the wager. He has established space though, so it's not the end of the world. But what meter situation are we on at the moment though? Yeah, wow, Star Charge could do some damage. I reckon he'll spend two off. All right, oh, two. no, he's over around. Oh, wow, well, he didn't spend anything. That was a read on a read right there. It was indeed. Here we go again, using the retreating shot. This max range distance is exactly what playing to win wanted. Oh, wow, he thought for sure that was going to be a meter burn. Star Charger didn't go for it. He spent a lot of bars trying to keep him at bay, though. He's now got nothing to fight him off with. If he gets knocked down once and tries to wake up, it's game over. Good defense from playing to win, though. Just not getting opened up by any of these lows, but that jumping is going to connect. Just as I can say that, the commentator's curse. And again, the mix-up becomes a bit dangerous. We have actually seen a, 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 a distinct lack of wake-ups from playing to win. Here we go. Oh, Send one that more time. Good block on the cross-up. No, to get attacked by the overhead, but no confirmed from playing to win. Oh, wow, but Ooh, that's going to do it. Cat dash. Hang on a minute. Very brave decision, but it did work out. Now, playing to win, I know he doesn't play exclusively Deadshot. I, as far as I'm aware, um, I know at least early days he was dabbling with a little bit with Dr. Fate, but I think for, for now he might just be trying to go straight for uh, stage, either stage selection or just giving himself a little bit more time. I think one thing we absolutely have to point out here is how well Star Charger is actually playing this matchup. Oh no, absolutely. I think a big part of it comes down to like him managing his beta. Oh, absolutely. I mean, like, in this environment as well, bear in mind, like, when Deadshot, unless he spends bar, his projectiles don't do a huge amount of damage. But when Catwoman hits you on the other hand, it's a massive payout. He tried to cat dash through there, but he just went straight into a bullet. And there's that max range jump uh, two almost, just, yeah, to, just to confirm that standing string. I think the combination of the jump two and the low whip is establishing so much dominance. A range that Deadshot is normally very comfortable in just became very uncomfortable against this one particular character. And there's Vita Burn again, gets that down one, and must be plus on block. He was consistently going for buttons after it. Another full combo. Match point. Star Charger on the verge of trying to make this a 3-0. He is doing a good job of it so far, looking really comfortable, just well versed in what to look out for in the matchup specifically. So I said, right, it's, it's, it's players being ready for Deadshot. I'd rather cut you. I think that's one of the things to observe right here is that if you're going to Combo Breaker and Deadshot is a very popular character, it's a matchup everyone needs to be ready for. On both flip sides, you know, playing the character and playing against the character. Couple of fumbles right there. I think having access to this unblockable behind him is going to be very important. Yeah, especially though he's going to use that bar on that meter burn rifle just to get it. That was actually a really, really strong sequence from playing to win. He was massively down on life, but he's actually just tied it up and is still right back at where he's doing damage. Misses the punish again. It's because he's consistently it, it must trying be to back It one. must be quite a tight punish. I think, I think off back one in particular, I think so. And again, Star Charger once again. Dancing around at this mid range, you know. Oh, haven't seen that in a while, but Star Charger bringing it back out. Holds on to his trait. Yeah, saving it until the end. Nice conversion. Unfortunately, drops the ender. Would have been a nice chunk of damage, that one. And I've got a max range, cat match level, I should say. Cat Scratch playing to win. Stuck between a rock and a hard place. Oh. There's that clean jump in. That's everything he needed and has no wager activated. And it will come down to a jump at the last minute. Star Charger is going to take that one over playing to win. Now, I think that matchup that we pretty much saw right there, 
was. Yes, <laughs> shout out to Star Charger. Star Charger. I mean, he, when this guy is around, he brings those beadworks completely. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at that! This is an animated gentleman. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, check out the eyebrow movement. We can respect that even better than yours. I, I, I would so? agree because his are in unison and actually controlled. Yours just have a life of their own, of course. But so in that match, in that matchup that we just saw, so it came down to I think that Catwoman. You would think maybe on paper that this is a up, up close character. She gets zoned out, yada yada yada, but. She has a lot of jump distance normals. I and think that it's, it's in basic. Particular, like, like very dangerous. We've, we've seen people speak completely about like how she kind of dominates that kind of mid to long range, and that's kind of the range she was sitting at for the majority of the time. You know, going for those jump ins, the scratches, whatever. But on the topic of some cool moments, we actually do have a replay to show you guys. I believe this is a Forever King highlight of some particularly tasty damage we saw from him when this yeah, was, this was yeah. Echidus when he didn't wager. And look at how much this did by itself. He just held onto it. Seven hundred and forty-two damage we saw in one but go. Bear in mind that was with four bars as well i'm assuming what happened there like right here he's like man i'm not gonna take too much damage right here he's got venom yeah i don't mind but if i if i don't clash i've got four bars i can make the comeback hang on a minute that really hurt damn what am i gonna do about this oh that's overhead i'm dead maybe i should have wages man but that's that's just being a nutshell though isn't it i mean if, oh. but at the same time if, if his venom's not up you do that damage to him so it's kind of like that that is that trade out but i'm just happy we've seen so much bane today I think that's actually why the decision might have been made, though, right? Was during that time, it's like, well, if I use my four bars, that's going to be it. You know, if I get four bars of cooldown, I can make the comeback. But it wasn't that day, of course. But we will be able to see some more of that later on, I'm sure. But for now, Mortal Kombat X will be up next on BG Callisto. But for now, we are going to go for some downtime. So we'll be back at 8 p.m. Central Daylight. Don't go anywhere, guys, because back then we're going to be continuing with some good old Injustice 2 action. But over on BG Callisto, we've got some Mortal Kombat X coming right up. See you there.